Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table, I am Rob, and I'm playing uh, One Deck Dungeon. It's literally one dungeon in one deck. Uh, but this is a small box fantasy theme game. Dungeon diving, rolling dice, random monster pulls, uh, campaign included in the box, which blew my mind. Uh, and when I saw that, I literally first playthrough uh, started to campaign. So in my learning playthrough I did yesterday of the game, where I fully learned the game, played through it. I've recorded one playthrough of a campaign, but we're going to be continuing today with a stream where I'm just going to play a few times. I'm assuming uh, we'll play at least twice. I don't know how long it'll take, uh, but we'll just have some fun chilling here, playing a bunch. I've also scheduled a stream for tomorrow, so check that out if you're watching this far in the future. It'll be in a playlist, which should be linked down below, where you can watch both episodes and maybe more if we keep going uh, and trying to beat all the bosses kind of thing. So... Uh, yeah, thank you to our Patreon supporters. Thanks to everyone joining us live and watching. You're all awesome. And I just need to get the chat up here so I can see what you are saying. All right. Hello, hello, everybody. I <laughs> like the music. <laughs> I literally picked that music like two minutes before the start of the stream. <laughs> it sounded cool. It sounded like dungeony, spooky kind of. Uh... And yes, thanks, Sean, for the sub. I saw that pop as I was running downstairs. Or I heard it, actually, and then I saw it when I got here. Uh... <laughs> hey, Fur, yes, you'll learn how the campaign sheet works. Uh, I'll make sure I'm doing it properly. We'll even look at the rules a little bit here. Uh, actually, that is a good thing. I will bring... I have them up, I believe. Yes. So we're going to open the rules here. So actually, I'll give a, an overview of the game for those who don't know how to play. Uh, I'll do my best to kind of highlight everything so you can understand what's going on and then follow along. And we're going to do a few playthroughs here, like I said. So let's just jump down to the table. And we can see the game here. Okay, so on your screen, we have a dice tray. Not included with the game. Does not fit in the box. Uh, but this is where I'll be rolling my dice. We have a paladin. Uh, this paladin, normally you play. Uh, you just pick a paladin. You're playing solo. You pick the first player side. If you're playing two-player, which you can play out of the small box, uh, you click the two-player side. So it's slightly different amount of dice you're rolling, and I'll show you those in a second. And the ability might be balanced for two players. So it's really, like, feels like a solo game at its heart, but then they spread the love amongst two players. Uh, and if you have another box or the standalone expansion, uh, you can play up to four players. Uh, the box is, like, really tiny, and it's super portable. This was now, I think, my portable game of choice. Before that, I think it was Star Realms. Uh, or Hero Realms, uh, but man, One Deck Dungeon, especially solo-wise, uh, this is awesome. Uh, and you can play with this as your dice tray right out of the box. So you could just, you know, play on like a tiny little table. Like, as you can see here, like the Chip Theory dice tray, you guys all have seen this in streams. You guys know roughly how big this thing is. Uh, this box, like, fits into it with room to spare. Uh, it's very tiny. Uh, so I'm very zoomed in here. This is not a lot. This does not take up a lot of table space, uh, which is really cool. Very portable. Uh, and a little more game in the box than I expected, which is pretty cool. So we'll show that here. But yeah, a little tiny box game. Uh, 25 US MSRP, I believe is what it is. I got it for 23 or 24 Canadian. Uh, so it's not bad. Not bad by Asmati Games. And I believe Oz Asmati Games is like a one-man company there. Chris uh, Sieslik, if I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry if I butchered that name. But uh, that's what I do here. So uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So the main thing is this dungeon deck. Uh, there's a deck. We're going to see a bunch of things out of this deck. Every time we play, you get one, one deck dungeon right here. Uh, but when you're playing, time passes. And to signify time passing, you'll flip cards off this deck. That'll just go to a discard pile, and you don't see them on that floor of a dungeon run. You may see them on the next floor. You may not see them in that, that game, that session, that run through the dungeon you're playing. So that kind of helps you so you don't see the same stuff all the time. And most... I, well, actually... I think quite a few of the cards have just duplicates, but a bunch of the cards only have one of, uh, so you're not going to see a lot uh, of the same stuff. But I guess if you played a ton in a sitting, you know, you might only want to play once or twice in the same sitting. We'll play twice at least here, and we'll see how that goes. And then we're play back playing tomorrow. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of cards in here, a lot of cards. Uh, we'll go over what those look like in a second. Uh, we have the stairs under here. These stairs we'll deal with, but at the end of a floor, if you see the stairs, you have the option of going down to the next floor of the dungeon. Uh, how the dungeon is determined, you start the game off, you pick a dungeon. So we have the Dragon's Cave. It has a difficulty of one there in the top. 
uh, on the back is the boss. So you can fully look at the boss, kind of see what we're working towards. This is kind of how you do it. Same with uh, Too Many Bones, a game we play on the channel a lot. Kind of work towards the boss, build your character to the boss. That's what you have to do in this game. It's very similar. Uh, so focus on things that are going to help you take down the boss. Uh, don't worry so much about the dungeon. Worry about the boss. Uh, so in here, uh, we're going to need eventually some pink dice. We're going to need fives and sixes. You cannot hit the rest of the monster until you've covered this up. So how this works, based on stats I have on my card here, I could roll three yellow dice, one pink. Uh, this is like uh, attack, agility, and magic. And there's my health. So I have five hearts for health. Um, so I can roll three yellow dice, a pink die, and three blue dice right now. Uh, and when I go to fight this guy, let's say I rolled my dice. Uh, let's take... That's what I have right now. So I roll these up. And how this works uh, is I need to start... This is, like, this is basically roll for it with a real game wrapped around it. Uh, so what I can do is start covering up things on the box. So for example, this spot here, I would need at least a 6 yellow or higher. Uh, obviously, I can only go to 6. So on a D6 as you have in this game. And I'm going to cover that up. And when I cover up that spot, I do a hit to the monster, for example, or a hit to the boss in this case, and I prevent myself from taking a damage. And if you see, this is a yellow. I can only put one die in this single box. But in a longer box here, I can pile up as many dice as I want. I literally can keep going like this. And if I had more yellows I was rolling, I can pile them up on here. And I can keep going like that. And I can keep going like that. And you, you can pile as many dice as unlimited into the long box you want. Uh, go nuts. So that's how that works. But the little squares uh, that fit one die, that's all you get is one die in there. And like for example, in here I would need at least a total dice of 17 pips to block four damage coming back at me. And you cannot cover up any of these other hexes, or, or sorry, not hexes, uh, squares or spots, rectangles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you cannot cover up any of these other spots unless you've covered up the defensive position first. So it's like you're kind of blocking the monster coming at you first. And if you don't block him, you're kind of knocked on your butt and you can't attack. So you'd have to have agility, aka pink dice, two of them of five to cover these two shields uh, up here. Or else you can't start hitting the boss back or bo blocking anything else. So... We're going to play the dragon today. He's going to be our dungeon of choice. Uh, and he is just uh, like a level one and easy or basic or I don't know what it'll call. We'll look in the rules for it in a second to get the terminology down. But this is his three floor dungeon. So we definitely need to be rolling at least, at least three pink dice. Hopefully by the time we get to him. Actually, sorry, only at least two technically. Uh, and they have to hit fives or higher. So obviously the more pink dice we roll, the better odds of that happening. So getting more than two pink dice, probably a good thing. So we need to up our agility. And then once we get our agility in check for this boss, we want to start uh, rolling lots of yellow and blue dice and covering up these spots. There is another die. You have your pink and blue switched. Uh... Oh yeah, whatever. I'm just running through an example. I know. I'll, I'll do it properly when we're playing. I'm just doing an example. Yeah, I... I rolled too many pink dice and not enough blue and stuff. Um, but I'm just trying to uh, show you how the colors work. So the black die is like a wild card. Uh, this can be any color. So you can do things in this game like level up. Uh, and you'll get an encounter bonus here uh, where you roll one black die. Anytime you see that black star symbol there, that's you rolling a black die. Okay. For example, I have a heroic feat ability on my character. Roll any or all of your dice stored here. So I can store a black heroic die here when you open a door with a four plus experience. That's what that means. And I may store up to two dice at a time. So I can put two dice on my character, for example, and these are heroic dice. And then I can choose to roll them and I can choose to roll them in uh, combat against a monster or dealing with like a trap, which is known as a peril. But I cannot use my heroic ability in a, mo in a boss fight. So it doesn't work in a boss fight, but that's your heroic ability there. I also have this skill built in. Uh, for every two hearts you would lose, you prevent, or sorry, for every two damage you would lose, uh, prevent one damage. You cannot prevent damage otherwise. And this works in combat or peril. So those are the two types of rooms I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, but these black dice, I could roll them and they would count as any color. So I could use this, this black six to cover like any one of these. So I maybe don't have to get my agility so high if I can make sure uh, I can get some wild card dice to go on there. But this boss that we're working towards, he has a special ability. He says black heroic dice cannot be placed on the boxes that do damage to him. So these three boxes here, if I can put a yellow six, a blue six, or a pink six there, 
I will do a hit to him. And if I can get up to six hits on him, six damage, uh, we win. And you keep fighting him round after round. So that's what we're working towards. That's the end. Uh, there are other ways to get black dice. You can combine two dice. So I can take any two dice here. I can take this pink six and this blue four. And I can discard them. And I can get a black wild card heroic dice of the value of the lower of these two dice. So I could exchange this six pink, this blue four at any point during a fight or whatever. And I can get a black four, which will help me. You'll see. Uh, you'll see how that works and how that can help me or not. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how the dice work. So we're playing a little role for it here uh, in one deck dungeon of covering boxes. So this is the dragon's cave. Here's each floor. So we're going to have floor one to deal with. And every time we hit a peril, we're going to also need to cover up this shield. Remember, you got to cover up shields first before you do any other, other boxes. Uh, so for perils in the first floor dungeon, we're going to always have to deal with this too. And any color die can go there since it's a gray box. So it's like anything you want. Over here, for every uh, encounter, combat encounter, uh, for the first floor, we're going to have to put at least a yellow three here. You can put a yellow four, a yellow six, whatever, uh, and you'll prevent a single damage. But this is in addition to what is on the monster or the trap that you're facing. And in the first floor, we have a special rule here in the Dragon's Cave, Hall of Statues. Uh, spend an extra five time, which is discarding cards off the deck, so an extra five cards pitched off the top of the deck, before you even start your first turn on each floor. Okay? And as we go deeper in the dungeon, we're going to uncover more stuff. And you use the turn reference card, uh, which is an awesome turn reference card, by the way. Uh, so this is how we deal with floor one. Then we go to floor two eventually by going down those stairs I showed you earlier. And eventually we'll be on floor three before we go to fight the boss. And once you go uh, at the end of floor three, you can go down the stairs and then it's boss time. And then you don't have to worry about any of this dungeon crap. But, so for example, on the third floor, every monster we fight, we're going to have to try to cover this box, this box, and this box. And this one we have to cover before we cover anything else on the monster, uh, including their armor too. Like it gets added to that. So all armor boxes, all shield boxes, whatever they're called, have to be covered. So that's that. The turn reference sheet. This will help me, guide me here. So at the start of every turn, you have to spend two time off the top of the deck. You'll see this many, many times. Then on your turn, you have an option. You can explore the dungeon, which is add some more rooms to your options, basically up to four doors. Or you can spend two and then enter a room, which you could flip a closed door and we'll see what's behind it. And then you have a choice. You can deal with what's behind the, behind the door or you can flee. Uh, you could also just deal with a previously open door and fight that, but you can't flee from it if you've already fleed from it once. Uh, and then in encounters, which I'll show you in a sec, you can uh, deal with perils and stuff. We'll walk you through that. Uh, and then potions. We have a potion here on our turn reference card. This is signified by a white cube. And we can spend these white cubes, and we can also get more of these white cubes by leveling up. Uh, and we can spend them to, for example, we have a built-in, our, our basic potion. There's ways to get more potions, I'll show you. Uh, you can heal three damage from one hero at the start of a turn, or two damage any time. And this can be used in combat, which includes a boss fight, or perils. Okay. Anything with the swords is, includes the boss fight. Uh, that is combat. But a uh, trap, you can also do this healing. So over in the middle of it, we're getting spanked. Uh, we can spend for two damage. Or we can wait. If we can last till the start of the next turn, we could heal three and make our potion count a little more. But you get one free to start the game with. Um, and now I'll show you what's on the back of these dungeon decks. So when you explore, you'll start by revealing uh, four doors. And then you would pick a door. Your choice. Another random aspect of the game. <laughs> And, you know, boom, uh, we got a four-level ogre. So this is the amount of experience I could get if I beat this ogre, if I choose. Uh, it is a combat encounter. You know this. This is something about the expansion type. Then we have a bunch of those boxes like we saw in the boss. No shields, so we can just start covering this up right away. But remember, we have to deal with whatever is showing over here, too, on the dungeon. Because this is a combat encounter. So, uh, you also, uh, this, you get an ability that you could take as loot. So as loot, you could take an item, which is the left side of the, of the card here. You could take experience, which is these four points here, or you can take a skill, which is this bottom part. So three types of loot you could take, but you might need to make that choice. Or I could have fleed and just left them there open. But if I take it as experience, I have this level card deck stack here. So I have level one through four, uh, and they get progressively uh, better where I can hold more items or more skills. Uh, and during setup, I get one potion. You saw that. I have no black heroic die bonus for my encounters. Uh, and it tells me how much I need to level up. So if I take this card as experience, I slide it sideways and I throw it under here to show that I have four experience. As I add cards to here, 
I can get more experience. And at the end of a turn, I could level up. And if I do, I can keep throwing cards under here. And then if I level up, I choose to level up, I would spend at least six, and I take those cards, pitch them, and boom, I level up, and boom, now I'm on level two. And any spare experience just stays there. It just stays there. And now I've got to try to get to eight to level up. But when I reach level two, I get a free potion. I now roll one die on every encounter, one black die for free. And now I can hold up to three items and three skills. And I'll show you the items and skills in a second. But that's how leveling up works. Items, which is on the left side of the card, which lines up with the items on the left side of my card, uh, they slide under here and give me more health or more dice I can roll to my stats in every encounter, which is awesome. Okay. If I take it as a skill, it slides on the bottom here and adds to my skills. And remember, items and skills have a restriction on the level card you're currently at. You can only hold so many. The cool part is, let's say I have uh, two skills. Uh, it only accounts, I think, ones you've added. I don't think it counts the ones you already have. Starting and basic, yeah, it says right on here. Duh. Starting and basic skills do not count toward this limit. So it's like ones that you got from encounters. So ones I've attached to my card. So, except for the basic, which I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, but we have a skill on the bottom right now built in. We add this one. We're only at one skill for our, our level limit. And now I have this skill, which I can use once per encounter. All skills are once per encounter or once per round on the boss. Boss is like fighting an encounter after an encounter each round of the boss fight. But every room, you only get like kind of one round against it. Uh, so I could do this whole healing or preventing damage thing. I could do this, uh, discard any number of value five dice and gain that many yellow six dice. Okay, it's called Brute Force, and I can use it in either a peril or a combat. And that's how that works. So you have an option. Every time you take it, there's decisions to be made. Do I want to get more dice? Am I allowed? And the cool part is, uh, I'm only allowed to have, for level one, I can only have one item attached to my card. But if I got another monster, and I wanted to attach this one, I can put it on the side and just pitch the other one. And the cool part is, you don't lose that. It's not just gone. It actually becomes experience. So you could use it for a bit and then throw it away and it will become experience attached to your card. So it's like, yeah, I, I, my understanding, the way I finally figured out how to win was just pile crap on your guy, get it to use. And when you find something better, slide it on, throw away something else, and then you'll get your level ups going. Uh, maybe not prioritize leveling up, but that might be different with certain characters. That's how it worked for me for the Paladin. But I'm sure there's other strategies with other characters and their abilities and their stats that maybe it works better just to throw things at the uh, level and try to level up as quickly as possible. Um, but I personally like to get things and jam them on the side. Unless I don't need it, unless the ability's crap and maybe I don't need extra dice. But like, when do you not need extra dice? Uh, and yes, Brian, I did pick a name. I'll show, I'll show you guys when I get to the campaign sheet. Uh, thanks to our patrons for helping me with that. Uh, and... Uh, that's how leveling works. That's how the encounters work. Uh, perils. Did I see a peril? Did I see a peril? No, this is combat, combat. Where'd the other ones go? Over here. Uh, combat, apparel. Here we go. So this is a peril. So it's similar to combat, except for you know it's a peril because it has a little bear trap thing there. Tells me the set. Tells me the experience, just like the other one. Uh, except for on these ones. So I always roll on these cards. You just roll all your stats. You roll all your dice along the left here that your items give you and your base stats give you. But on these, I have to choose an option. So I see a force wall. What do I want to do? Do I want to spend three time, aka discard three cards off my dungeon deck, and climb around it with agility? I only get to roll my pink dice and or black heroic dice, which count as any color. Uh, or I can try to blast through it where I don't cost, doesn't cost me any time. And then I have to try to get blue dice and black dice on here. And that's what I could try. So I need at least 11 in this box. Remember, you can put as many dice as you want in a rectangle box. So I got to kind of evaluate this each time. And for apparel, I pick one, and you only roll the dice of that color, and that's it. So you got to take you got to take the you know the math at, ahead of time and play your odds and see if it's worth it or not. Uh, but this one's pretty awesome. It would give me an extra heart, so health, and you die of course as soon as the damage on you is equal to or higher than the damage here. So my paladin is toast, and we fail, and we're dead in the dungeon if we reach that. But remember, we can pop potions if we have any uh, in the middle of a fight. Uh, Elizabeth says, oh, I didn't know you put the discarded as XP. Dang, maybe that's why I lose. I'm pretty sure. Is, is anyone else can confirm that, but that's how I thought it works. Uh, we can find out, though. I want to make sure I'm playing it right. I remember, I only, like, learned the game yesterday, so. <laughs> uh, let's find out. I have the rule book here. I'll bring it up in a sec. I'm just going to scroll through until I find. Where is it?
Claim loot. Let's see if we can find it here together. Uh, let's see. Not zoomed in enough. Let's go a little bit more. After suffering consequences and surviving the encounter, card is claimed as loot. The party chooses to take it either as an item, skill, potion, or XP. In the case of an item or a skill, the party chooses which hero claims the card as loot. Potions and XP are shared by the entire party. Your current experience level card restricts the number of items and skills each hero can have. It also provides you with a bonus heroic dice for all encounters once you reach level 2. Uh, let's skip down to items here. Uh, represented or Represent new equipment your hero picks up in the dungeon, raising stats so you can roll more dice in each encounter. To take a card as an item, tuck it under the left edge of your hero card. Uh, let's see. Oh, right here. Uh, in this paragraph at the bottom, I think. When taking an item or skill as loot, you can replace an existing item or skill with your new loot. The replaced card becomes XP and is immediately tucked under the level card. A hero cannot have duplicate skills, and the party cannot identify the same potion type twice. There we go. We got our answer. Booyah. So we learned something new today. <laughs> there you go, Elizabeth. Uh, that should be helpful. All right. Uh, so, yeah, when I figured that out, that helped me a ton too. Because I was doing weird things, and, and like when I sat down thinking about the game as I was reading through the rules very slowly, very carefully yesterday, trying to learn the game, uh, I realized that like, why throw stuff on the level and make things harder for you in that current floor when you can just take it as an item for now and when you get something better, just throw it as XP and eventually level up. I can understand the idea of rushing to level 2 so you can get a black rope die, but I mean that item could have been attached and you could have got maybe one extra die and maybe even some health to keep you alive uh, until you're ready to pitch it as experience. Or if you needed a potion desperately, maybe that way you'd want to rush the XP, but... I don't know. I just felt like always stick stuff on is items or skills first. And you, that's where you have to make your decisions on, like, do you need something? Like, maybe if I'm rolling six attack dice, yellow dice, maybe I don't want any. But then maybe in that case, I take a skill that puts those extra yellow dice to use and helps get me something I'm short on. So that's where those decisions in this game come in, I think, is trying to fill your weaknesses and be picky and choosy based on uh, what comes out of the dungeon and what you flip over. Whether it's worth it to fight it and get the skills or stats you need. Don't just take anything, because sometimes maybe something isn't doesn't work with your whole flow. Just throw that away as experience. That's fine. That's fine. So Dragon says, my priority was items, potions, skills, then XP. Yeah, I think XP is the lowest, to be honest. Like, when I played that way, it seemed like, okay, the game kind of clicks. That's, that's the way I felt. But I, I'm sure there's other ways you can do it. And once you get to know all the different skills... Uh, and the characters and their abilities and stuff, it, it might might make more sense to do other things. But just the way I was playing with the Paladin, that's that's how it seemed to work for me. But I was playing on like the lowest difficulty, which I'll, I'll show you how that works uh, in a second. Because I was just trying to learn the game. So we're going to throw this card under here. And there is our Dragon's Cave. Okay, there's our turn reference there. Uh, we get a potion. This is... The weird thing is, I don't understand. So I have these cool damage tokens. So they have these like nice, uh, awesome... You know, they're pretty big. They're bigger than the dice. These these translucent plastic uh, tokens for damage, which I feel are a little too big uh, for the game. But uh, they give you these big white cubes. Like, they couldn't make nice little potion tokens that, that are, like, in the shape of little potion bottles and make them purple? I don't know. I think that's weird just to do, like, white cubes that seem kind of like a strange design choice. Uh, when, you, when you spend the upgrade of this component and, and not just, like, plain white cubes, I mean... It's just white. I don't know. I guess it stands out on the card, maybe, but I thought that was a weird decision. But that's just me. So here's our level. Okay, we'll throw this here. Uh, we got one potion drink set up. Let's uh, shuffle up our dungeon deck. And you get no doors at the beginning. You actually have to take a turn to explore, which I also thought was a weird choice. How in setup, you don't just set up your doors first. I thought that was a strange thing. Seems a little like counterintuitive to how most games start. Well, once you understand that, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's fine. Potions can be swapped out. Oh, yeah, that's another thing I want to show you. So there's not just skills on the bottom of cards. Uh, you can also get potions. Uh, and these attach to the bottom here. And every time you attach one, I think you get a card. Start with one potion and add one. Yeah, for each potion type you identify, remember you can't do duplicates. So if I take her heroism there, 
Uh, I could attach it on the bottom. Becomes another potion. And I get a token. I can spend these two tokens any way I want. So I could spend them both to do the top heal or this, this ability down here. It's however you want to do them. And remember, I get a new one when I level up. And then even at level four, uh, you get... Uh, you can use extra experience if you're really rocking uh, to get extra potion tokens. You can spend five experience to, to just get some more tokens, which is pretty crazy. I don't know if we'll get there, but it's something you can do. Remember, this game is all about dice rolling and card flipping. And yes, you can get some skills to mitigate that a little. But uh, yeah, I'm assuming there's some playthroughs where just you think everything's going right, but you're just flipping the highest level monsters. Then you're rolling your dice and you're getting ones on all of them. It'll happen where it, you just get tanked. But you do that so many times in a playthrough that you're flipping monsters, doing doing encounter rooms, and rolling dice. Uh, you need to figure out how to mitigate or use your extra dice and your ones and twos that you roll. You need to know how to turn those into better things. And there are ways to do that if you pick the right skills and stuff. Assuming we see them. That's the other thing. You might not see what you're looking for. Uh, because it's all random and things get flipped because of time spent. All right. So, but for a $25 small box game, there's a lot going on here, which I think is pretty cool, considering. I've bought some $20 games that, like, literally are like, you play them once, and you're like, that was uh, one mechanic game, throw it in the garbage. Like, it's just, you never want to play it again. Or it's like, oh, okay, I could play this with, like, small children, because it's too simple. But, Yeah. This is on like the level of like Star Realms and Hero Realms, I think, where it's like a lot of game in a small box. Uh, okay, so because we're doing campaign, which let's talk about that. I think I covered pretty much everything. The rest that I didn't, if I did miss anything, it'll come up during the playthrough. It'll make more sense. Uh, I know I didn't ramble on, around everything, and I didn't ramble in maybe the best flow of order, but I'm just trying to get in the playthrough here. All right, there are how to play videos out there. I should probably have put one in the description, but I did not, but there are ones. Uh, okay. Oh, the only other thing though, if you find a how to play video, try to find the most recent one you can find because another, I don't know if it's a positive or a negative, but it, it kind of bugs me when a game is designed and you can tell the play testing maybe wasn't that tight and they obviously had a Kickstarter. This game's been around for a few years. Um, but when I was looking for rules for this game, I found out there is like eight different versions of rules out there for this game and there have been modifications. And I think at version, I have version 1.8. I just got this recently. I think that's the latest version out there. But based on if you got it in the first Kickstarter or you got it in the next Kickstarter or you got it at retail after a few months after one of the Kickstarters or whatever, you may have a totally different version of the game which has maybe slightly modified mechanics, slightly modified hero abilities that have been rebalanced. Um, you might have totally changed rules. I don't even know. Uh, you might have different types of tokens in your box. Uh, there's lots of different crazy things I've seen. But that's kind of nuts. And I know Spirit Island's like that too. I know rebalancing happens. Once you get a game out in the world, people play the crap out of it. And then they point out things you and your few playtesters didn't find in your, you know, one month you spent playtesting. But it's kind of sad that not everyone will have the exact same game. So when you're watching rules videos, they may show stuff in the video that you're like, that's not what it says in my rule book. Or that's not how my game looks. Or that's not the ability my hero has. Uh, just a warning on that. So I'm playing with version 1.8 for those who care. And that's the latest PDF rules I'm looking at that I'm bringing up on the screen is version 1.8. So if you're curious why things are worded differently or maybe there's some clarifications, that is why. But at least they keep that available on our website along with an FAQ, which I think is good. Uh, but again, it's a cheap game. So worst case, you're like, oh man, they came out with version 2.0 that just makes things better. You go and spend 25 more dollars and you have the newest version. If you're really playing it that often and it bugs you that much. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> so yeah, I like that they show the version, but when I see that, it's like, really? I understand like a second version, like fixing the problems when your game went out to the public, but how many fixes you need when you're at version 1.8? Like you couldn't fix it in 1.2 or 1.1. I think it's kind of weird, but, and for a small box game, it's not that crazy and complex. So obviously there's some balancing stuff and the play testing was probably just this one guy doing it in his basement. And when you have only one set of eyes on something, you will miss stuff. You need a second set of eyes or more. But there probably is credits in there for play testers and I'm super sorry if I'm bashing you. But uh, yeah. I don't care if your game's $20 or $200. You gotta spend the time and try to perfect it as best you can. By at least two revisions. <laughs> uh... Oh yeah, there's a handful of playtesters in development. Shame. Shame. 
<laughs> Anyways. Uh, Pine Leaf Needle says, I don't think there were any versions between 1 and 1 1.5. Oh, okay. Well, that's weird. <laughs> so, okay, that's weird. Then why? Oh, why? Uh, okay. Uh, we'll not go on about that. <laughs> Rob, you come from IT. You know versions 1.3 to 20 is a thing. Yes. When software goes out there, you pay for it once and the software gets updates. Your OS gets updates. All that your, all that stuff gets updates. It comes to you for free and it just changes. If I bought version 1.5 of this game or 1.0, are automatic updates being sent to me in my mailbox when new cards get changed? Are they just appearing at my house? No, you gotta go buy them in the next Kickstarter or you gotta like get the update pack or you gotta buy a version 2.0 of the game. For a physical product, that is BS. You cannot compare it to IT. You can't compare it to IT. And hey, Katie, <laughs> long time we'll see. How you been? But yeah, you can't compare that to IT. But uh, unless they're forcing you to pay for the next version of the software, then that's BS. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just saying in games in general. I'm not trying to trash this game too much. It's still pretty cool. <laughs> but all right, let's have some fun. Okay, so we got our Paladin here. Uh, and our Paladin, thanks to our Patreon supporters, uh, I've chosen the name Paladina. So you get your campaign sheet for this game. Uh, they give you a nice little pad, and this is awesome. I was like blown away when I found this in there. Uh, it's kind of like the perk system a little bit from Gloomhaven. Uh, it's just like video game style here. Uh, I have a paladin. That's my hero. And her name is Paladina, and you see my horrible chicken scratch writing there. Uh, based on the difficulty of the dungeon, you are allowed to check off certain checkboxes with points that you earn. So for any dungeon, I can always check off the green circles. No problem. If I face a medium or hard dungeon, uh, which there are pips here. So here's some of the other dungeons. There's two pips or three pips. So I believe that's medium and that's hard. Okay. So you have five dungeon options in the base game or in the first standalone, whatever game. Uh, and then if you complete a floor, you earn a check mark. So remember you can complete up to three floors in a game. Uh, you could level up. Uh, every time you level up, you get a check mark. And if you defeat the boss, you get three check marks. Okay. So like I said, I want to try this campaign right from the start. So in my learning game yesterday where I was figuring out the game, I put it on the easiest difficulty and I earned a bunch of check marks. So I crossed off a bunch of boxes. So I'm already into it here and I thought that would be good to kind of show how this works right from the beginning. I beat the dragon in that playthrough and I played one game. So the idea with this uh, is once you unlock something, you can start with it if it's in basic, no problem. So if I unlock all this stuff here and I need to have like a beat a hard boss or at least play a hard dungeon, earn some check marks, and a medium, and a regular, and I could get all these unlocked and play with them every time I play. And if you're playing two-player, each player, they take a separate sheet, okay? Uh, and then before I sit down and do a play session, I have to pick which one of the other three and focus my playthrough on that. So I could use stuff from healing, but I can't use stuff from healing and combat. So you see the name of the stat, or the, the focus class over here. Uh, and... So if I, I grab stuff from dungeon, I can only grab stuff from basic and dungeon. But I can use, I think, as much as I want from there. And if this gives you skills, these don't count towards your skill limit uh, on uh, the level card. So the idea is you want to try to beat your score. So if I play a whole campaign and I beat all five bosses, I want to see how many games that took me. And the next time I play through a campaign, I start a new sheet, I can compare it to how fast I beat it. And the idea is you want to try to beat your own score and get less check marks on the bottom. But the cool part in this, and I noticed like this game's not the easiest, and I haven't never played a medium or a hard dungeon, but I'm assuming these will make the game a little more uh, helpful and easier to maybe get further into those dungeons. So I unlocked only one ability here, Veteran. So I start each game with any basic skill, and this is great, because I want to show this off. I think it's really cool. And I have one check mark towards durability, where I could have one extra health, but I don't, I don't have that yet. I'll need to at least get four check marks from a medium dungeon before, or a hard dungeon before I can even unlock that. So this is what I'm working towards. So every time you play this game, you have this little pad that fits in the box and you can work on this, which I think is a motivation to get this game back to the table over and over again. And maybe some of the repetitiveness uh, might be okay because you're like just farming experience and farming check marks and unlocking perks and adding those to your character, which is one of the biggest hooks in the biggest board game of all time, which is Gloomhaven. So like the fact that this little box game has it, I think is awesome. Like, awesome. That's great. So you can't take, fit Gloomhaven in your pocket, not even with Jaws of the Lion, but this game you could, which is cool. So you get a little taste of that stuff. 
Let me catch up with the chat here. Hey, Hexy. Um, <laughs> yes, Buell. It does take me some time to get started always because I like to go over the game in the first playthrough of a series. For those who are wondering why I haven't started playing and I'm like 40 minutes into the stream here or 35 minutes in. Because uh, I want to go over the whole game and show off the game. So someone can actually follow along through the playthrough without watching going, I don't get it. What is he doing? And then turning away. I know when you're watching live, you miss that if you join late. But uh, I do that for the majority of people who watch these videos, watch them after the fact. Um, so that's why I go over that stuff. So tomorrow when we continue this playthrough, we're just going to get right into it and keep playing. So that's how it works. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Hexy's here, shouting out his channel. Uh, let's see here. Finish part two of Aspire. Uh, oh, yeah, don't we show no gaming rules stuff here. Okay. Let's see. Dragon says, once you lose a couple of times via Dragon, you really, you rarely lose another dungeon. Remove potion token. Yep. I haven't even started yet, but we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. I would notice that when I went to use it. Um... Hey, David, first time watching live. Awesome. Welcome. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat uh, and we'll carry on. <laughs> and yes, I do like to chat with the chat. Absolutely. I want to answer questions as part of the fun of watching live, right? Talk about the game we're playing, figure it all out, see if it's for you. Because uh, you can watch reviews, right? And get the game in a, a little quick review and kind of understand. But it's based on the opinions of that person uh, and it may not be for you. But I can give my opinions here, and then we'll go through a whole playthrough. And you don't have to watch the whole playthrough, but you'll at least see how the game works fully and see it from front to end. Instead of just reviews, sometimes they go over the rules in like an overview. And don't actually go through a full playthrough to see the length of how long it plays, see what the, what you're working towards is, uh, like boss fights and that kind of thing. So we'll see all that here a couple times today. Uh, so this is the basic skill we get from our, uh, we get from our uh, campaign that we unlocked. So the cool thing is these basic skills, they give you two of these cards in the box because it's for two players. So there are four of them on here. So we could take True Strike. I haven't even read these yet, but we could take True Strike. Uh, we could discard a yellow die we've rolled to gain a four value die of any type. And I would assume you could grab a heroic die. I would assume you can grab a heroic die so then it wouldn't matter. But I guess in some situations you can't use heroic dice on certain spaces so you might want to grab like a four of agility for example and this can be used only in combat or we could take ingen ingenuity increase and i'm okay with the chat giving me suggestions here what to pick based on my paladin we'll look at my character a little more closely in a sec um but i could uh this one doesn't cost me anything and i could increase one of my dice by one but only in apparel only in, against a trap or i could take force bolt to use in a combat I could discard as many blue dice to add up to whatever amount I want. So if I discarded a one blue and a three blue, that would be four points. That's what X would equal is four. And I could gain a yellow four and a pink four. Okay, I don't roll them. I just get them at that value, which I think that's pretty nice. Because I roll three blue dice to start. I probably would go for force bolt, actually. Because it might help me with my lack of agility pink dice. And this one, I could throw away agility, but you'll see I'm short on that, so I probably wouldn't take this. But you can increase another of your dice by this die's value. So if I throw away a three pink, I could increase my uh, uh, die that I've already rolled by three. Um, and that would be working in combat only. So any suggestions here on the upgrade? And Elizabeth says, what is more fun, the game or the chat? 50-50 uh, on that. Or equally as fun. <laughs> Uh, let's see. And we're going to kick some dragon butt, yes? Uh, let's see here. Second edition makes some really good updates. Uh, oh, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. The four is useful. Oh, yes, the four is useful. You want to be careful which die you grab of that as you're limited to the dice you have of that color. True. True. You're limited to what comes in the game. So I forgot to mention that in the start, but this is all we have to work with. You have six heroic dice. That's it. So if I'm storing them on my hero, on my hero card, I could discard them at any time if I need to roll them, uh, but you are kind of trapped to what you have. So you kind of want to do your skills in a certain order. If you need to pitch a certain color uh, that you need to re-roll for another ability, uh, those are there. That's all I have to work with. Okay. Uh, so I don't know what to pick here. Precision, force bolt, 
I like the Force Bolt. Like, I have three magic, right? So I could, if I'm, I'm hurting on agility, I could get some agility or attack out of there. I'm not sure during the dungeon, like, what enemies want more or not. And I picked this character, like, she looks, like, badass. Like, she's got this, like, Dark Souls armor on. Like, that. that's sick. So I, I picked her basically just because of the look here. Uh, it looks awesome. Like, she's, like, that. that's a sick art. But there are, like, I don't know, the barbarian-looking barbarian warrior uh, is okay. The mage looks awesome. But one attack, I'm a little scared, one player to go with one attack. The rogue looks cool. She looks like she's from, um, uh... Clank Legacy, or Clank, I guess, would be the thing. Maybe Clank Legacy, I guess, more. And then we have the Archer, and you can see they have all different stats. So the Archer looks sick. Uh, this is what I would pick just because I like Archers and Elves and that kind of stuff in games. Uh, that's what this gives me the vibe of. But they all have different abilities. But you get five characters in the game. Here's the other four I'm not playing with. And again, you can flip them to the two-player side and use them, and their abilities and stats will adjust. Uh, but yeah, I just picked the Paladin. Paladin looks sick. Uh, and the abilities are okay, I guess. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Force Bolt, you guys want? Force Bolt? Uh, okay. Force Bolt, which one was that? Yeah, that's the one I'm feeling. I'm feeling that one. I, I don't want this one because you have to toss a pink, and I don't really have... I only have one pink to start. Uh, Ingenuity is okay, but just changing a die up by one. I mean, that could be enough to get us through traps and take less damage. That'd be okay. But we can always change it before every sit-down in scenario. Like, I could change this next time we do a, a dungeon run. Or tossing away yellow die and getting a four of any type. It's okay. That's not bad. We roll a lot of yellow dice. But I want to... I think I'm going to try this. Because this will... Oh, this doesn't help us in traps, though. Mm. Uh, yeah, we'll just take the Force Bolt. As you guys are saying, oh, that's what I'm taking. I've never tried out any of them yet. So we'll just try them out here. We're going to play a couple playthroughs. Maybe we'll switch it up. And also based on the boss and the dungeon and stuff, we may switch. Uh, let's go there. Elizabeth usually plays the warrior. She seems pretty solid, actually. The warrior does seem pretty solid. Like, she's got a lot of attack. One more than I do. She's got a little bit more agility, which I think is probably more useful for traps and stuff. And magic, maybe magic's not needed as much. I don't know. I'm not sure. I played through once, and it seems like everything kind of comes up. But maybe there's something in the dungeon that more of. But again, you can run from things that you can't handle. So if I see something, I was playing this character here. If I was playing the rogue. I might run from a few monsters at first, but I can handle traps a lot better because they usually have an agility option too, right? To dodge them, it makes sense, thematic sense, I think. But I could be wrong on that, but yeah. So some cool choices made even when you're setting up the game of what character to pick. All right. I think we're good. I've shuffled this. Uh, I got my character. I got my campaign little upgrade. I think everything's good. Um, let me just catch up with the chat here, make sure everything's okay. Yeah, Kazumi wants Force Bolt also. Makes sense. And Vel Velge goes here again. Uh, saying, we'd love seeing top X list from you and Mel. Yep, they're coming. Uh, we got goals on Patreon to help with that. Uh, we got one for my, mine and Mel. I forgot to have one for just Mel, which we'll do in the future. She needs to play a few more games. And then she can put together her list too. And we spar I sparked your interest in Gloomhaven Jots Lion. But here in Vienna, US import versions are over 100 euros. Yeah, wait, wait till it's available. Wait till August. Belgico, wait till Jaws of Lions at your local game stores and available in your country. Yeah, yeah, just just wait. No need to support, uh, like, scalpers and Target and stuff. Yeah, support the little guy, too. Uh, Dragon says, tip on Force Bolt. You can use multiple blue die to get a higher number. Yep, that's the way I explained it. Example, toss a blue two and three to get a five. Yes. And that's something I saw, I don't know if it was in a playthrough or how to play video I was watching, where the player, I don't know if that was added to later versions, but they were not doing that in their playthrough. They had the chance to toss uh, blue dice. And they, they would see like a blue 5 on there. On the card it would say blue and a 5 black. And they if they didn't have a blue 5 they wouldn't use it. And they would think the blue dice go to waste. But that's not true. Yes, that is in the rules. At least version 1.8 rules that's in there. Uh, Warriors extra starting health. That's a good call. Yes, that makes it more durable. And Dragon. Yes, I played the Archer when I first got this game many months ago. I pulled it out, read through the rules quick, and played the Archer. And then I felt the game had too much randomness, and I wasn't really having fun with it, and I put it back in the box. But I didn't read the campaign rules. I didn't know about campaign. I just, like, 
I, I just tried to play basic quick on one afternoon and I was like, okay, it's a cute little game of lots of randomness. Meh. But then you guys voted for it on a Patreon poll saying it's the game I should really focus on solo before I do my top 10 solo list, which was unlocked recently. Uh, so that's why we're playing this first out of like five or six games I put on the poll. This one won it. So that's why we're playing it today. Uh, so I actually was like, okay, I'll take a second look at the game, really sit down, go through every single rule in the game, make sure I understand all the options. And when I read the campaign stuff, I was like, this is awesome, which I want to go over here. I think I covered everything. Um, so we earn check marks. Yeah, so if it's a one dot dungeon, you only check off green circles. We went over that. And we'll deal with the talent stuff if we get there, but it explains that. Uh, but here's what I want to go over. So when I was learning the game yesterday, I went on novice. Before the game begins, I would advance to experience level two. This includes uh, gaining a second potion. Okay, I played like that yesterday. But today we're going to start with standard. Before the game begins, draw one card and claim it as experience. Gain one extra check mark if you reach the boss. You could play on veteran, no rules changes, but you gain two extra check marks if you reach the boss at least, which I think is cool, or fearless. Start without a potion. Gain three extra check marks if you reach the boss, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but we're going to start on standard, and hopefully we'll remember when I'm getting my check marks at the end. If we actually reach the boss, remind me, we get an extra check mark for that too. Uh, but yes, we'll draw the card and gain the experience. So we're just dropping the top card. Hopefully it's a four. Oh, buddy, it is a four. Yeah. All right. So we got a four. Uh, so we'll slide this in. And boom. We need two more experience and we can level up. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right. Try to get everything nice and fitting in camera here. <laughs> okay. And that was always the case with blue dice. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I just saw it in a video and I was like, why is he not using those together? It's like, oh, I, I double, I grabbed my book again to make sure I was doing it right. I was like, okay, it's in my rules. Maybe it wasn't in those rules. Uh, oh, late August and your friendly local game store is holding one for you. Nice, Buell, nice. Okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. Like, that's the thing. Like, everyone wants certain games, right? But sometimes you got to wait. That uh, sucks. I know it sucks. But I know from recently... Usually I would be all called to the new in the past and I would have to have games when they're new. And once they weren't new anymore, I'd be looking to the next new shiny thing and forget about any old game. If a game didn't release that year, I just wouldn't care about it. But then I started realizing I missed a lot of games that I passed on that now have reviews, player impressions, have been out in the wild a while, have compared themselves to other games and have seen how they survive in the marketplace. And there's some gems that have been under the radar, but have then risen to the top, which I've gone back and played, and I've had some of the best play experiences, even though I'm playing like older games. Like Mage Knight, for example. I just started playing that in 2020. It's been out since like 2011 or whatever, and yeah, I feel like, man, it's still amazing, and I'm still having fun with it, and it was awesome. So yeah, don't worry. You could be nine years late on the game, and it's still gonna be just as awesome. That's me helping you try to get through the pressure of waiting. <laughs> Oh, your target has them in stock? Okay, scratch that. Go run. Go run. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hans is here. He's got his coffee ready for some dice rolls. Okay, so uh, let's get to it. And we're going to start our multiple playthroughs today. So I'm not rushing this stream at all. We're just going to chill and have some fun with it. And now we'll get to it. The original Mage Knight minigame was better. Uh... I feel like Board Game Geek and the board game community as a whole would disagree with you, Jim. Uh, obviously, the fact that it, I don't think it exists anymore and they're not making any money off it, I could be wrong. But uh, no one's ever told me to go check out the old Mage Knight minis game. But <laughs> but I believe you, it's probably good. But not good enough to survive and be in top list now and everyone talking about it. Uh, I'm sure it had some trouble competing with games like Warhammer and stuff. But yeah, all right. Let's see here. We're going to start. Oh, yeah, Hall of Statues. I was trying to remember there's some setup stuff. So we got to discard five cards off the top because of the Hall of Statues. That's the Dragon Cave doing that to us. So this is time passing. Uh, five cards will be discarded off the deck. Okay. And that's the default ability there. Now we're going to spend two on our turn. At the start of every turn, according to our turn reference here, you spend two for time. And we're going to explore because we can't actually uh, enter a room yet because we don't have any rooms. So now we have rooms. That's it. That's a turn. That's exploring. So now we're going to discard two cards. Start of our turn. Spend some time. 
So we're already a couple turns in the game. This game goes pretty quick. History disagrees. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, that's cool, Buell. That's yeah, support your fun local game store. That's cool. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um so we spend two more. Let's pick a room. Uh, I think this card is better. Uh, it's a level three, Pit of Spikes. It's apparel. Okay. Okay. So what we could do uh, is either climb around, spend three time, and we need to roll an eight on here. But we also, mainly, we need to get a two of any color on here, or else we can't even put dice on here yet. Or we could pick the agility option, try to get 14 on agility, plus cover this up. Hmm, let me check here. I only roll one pink die. Probably not the right way to go, go about it. But I could get pink dice from trading in blue dice, but I still don't think that's the right way to do it. All right, so uh, I could just flee. Let me think. So let's actually look at the abilities. This is how you're supposed to do this, I think. So do we need more yellow dice? Sure, more yellow dice would be great. Do we need this experience? Mm, we'd have to toss this card and we kind of waste an experience leveling up. So uh, I'm not really prioritizing experience. This ability, we could toss away a pink die and gain a six pink. So you could toss away like a one or two pink, turn it into a six agility pink die, but only in combats. That's okay. I think that's not a bad ability, not a bad skill, but is it worth maybe losing two health and time but again i do have this ability in perils for every two damage i would take i prevent one i'm just not allowed to use any other healing uh, or any other damage prevention i can still heal i just can't use like dodge or anything like that any skills in the game that let me avoid damage like that <sighs> okay so if i were to take this on and i would do the yellow most likely i would roll three yellow dice And I hope I get an 8 in yellow, and one of those would be at least a 2. And even if, even if, I just have to cover this at least. I think I don't even have to cover anything, really. I would just take the punishment, and I still get the card. But is it worth the pain? Or the risk? And climbing around it would cost me 3 cards of time. Yeah, I kind of want to pass on it. I kind of want to pass on it. It doesn't seem really worth it. Like, will I get eight on my yellow dice? I don't have an extra black die to roll. And even converting two dice. Yeah, I'm going to pass on it. It is a great skill. Yeah, that's true. But I could come back to it later. But I don't think I'll have more agility later. No, I'm going to try it now. Let's try it now. Okay. So let's... Uh, three times spent. We're going to do the climb around. Okay. Yeah, coming back to it later. I'll have to waste more cards coming back to it. So let's not do that. Uh, we're going to roll three yellow dice. Right, right. Nothing else. So we're choosing the yellow option, obviously. Uh, that's not good. So I rolled a one, a two, and a three. So I can cover up this with a two, and I don't have enough to cover that. So I would take two damage normally, but because of my ability, I only take one, and two time gets lost. So yeah, I didn't think I was ready for that one, but we got it. And I can turn uh, my pink agility into a six, which could help. But I also debate taking it for an extra yellow. Uh, we only have, we have no skills yet because the basic and the built-in one don't count. And we're allowed to have two skills and one item. So let's take the skill. Okay. Uh, the paladin's name went with Paladina. <laughs> it sounded the most feminine too and sounded funny, so I liked it. And let's see here. Yeah, I gotta waste more time fleeing. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, all right. So now two more. Start the next turn. I think I did everything. I'll reset. Okay. So two more time. Let's go to this room. All right. We found another peril. A locked door. Now, see, this one's also sucky. I don't think I'd ever take this ability because I have to toss away three pink dice. But taking another blue would not be bad. To attempt this one, though, the most I can get with pink is uh, a six. Because I have that ability. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this peril. Yeah, it doesn't seem worth it for a blue. I'm going to flee. So I'll spend two more on the next turn. And we'll go for here. Oh, man. All the perils. Get out of here. I need some combats. I have all my skills for combat. So I think I will try to decipher it. And a potion. Reroll all your ones and twos. And get to roll a black. Mm, no. I, I would go for this, I think, in this case. Or take the experience to level up so I can roll a black die on the encounter. Yeah, I'll probably level up on this one. But maybe not. All right, so we'll attempt this one. Uh, we'll pick the blue option. We're going to need to lose two time. And we're going to take our three blue dice. We roll. All right, so we rolled a four. Uh, sorry, was that a four? Why did I just switch? So I don't have enough. Hmm, yeah, I don't know enough. And exchanging. Yeah, this is uh, not really working out for me. All right. Yeah, it'd be nice if I would have flipped over a level four encounter so I could have got a heroic. Uh, so I'm going to take three time loss. And uh, one damage. Okay, and I'll take this as experience. Okay, and then we'll level up. We'll toss these away. And now after leveling up, we get an additional potion token. And we get an encounter bonus die. Okay, so on, on every encounter, we're going to roll an extra heroic black wild card die, which is good. I kind of wish I had that earlier, but that's okay. All right. Uh, usability, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so two more. One, two. Let's check out this one. Ah, uh, there we go. Level four. So that is, uh, we get a heroic die stored on our character every time we flip, uh, open a door with four experience or more. Uh, I don't think we're ready to fight an ogre at all. I don't think we're ready to fight him <laughs> at all. Wow. But I do like that we could get a sword and a health here. But man... We're going to flee, I think. He is not worth all that damage. We would lose the game. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, this should be gone. All right. So let's uh, flee, and we'll do another turn. And we'll explore. So we're going to put out two more cards. Then we'll do another turn. And we'll look at this card. Oh, another level four. So I can store up to two heroic dice on my character. Hmm, this one's, there's no shields here. Uh, we have this also that we have to worry about, but I feel like I don't have enough dice to roll yet. And no yellows on here, which is interesting. And before the encounter, I have to take a hit. But there are four, four total damage I could take. As long as I roll, or five total damage actually, plus this is six. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm ready for this guy right now. But I do have my two heroic dice. I have the extra die for the turn. I say we try it. I say we try it. Worst case, we're using our potion. One of them. Yeah, let's try it. Alright, so we're going to take these dice. Uh, and we're going to take all three of our yellows. We'll take a pink. We'll take three blues. Okay, that's what we get to roll. Mm hmm. And before the fight, we take 
uh, damage. So we need to be careful not to take, like this is super risky here, I might just end the whole playthrough. <laughs> yeah, I, and this is what happens in the game though, and, and like I see in the chat, Richard saying I'm getting hosed by RNG. It, it happens though, that's part of the, the game, that's why I like the campaign system, is even though I play, I could die on the first floor. Oh well, I get some check marks, maybe gets me a new ability, play it again. And the cool part is, you'll see things in different orders, you might get better dice rolls, you'll see better skills and stuff. I feel like, very weird, like I feel, yesterday when I played, I was this far in the dungeon, let's say, and I already had a couple cards on the side and stuff, uh, which are giving me more dice. And I find that maybe I should have taken that skill on the side as a die. But, that's okay, we're going to try here and go after the fire elemental. <laughs> Okay, uh, so let's see here. So there's no shields, so we don't have to cover up any of that stuff first, so we can kind of just play around here and figure out what we need to do. So let's try to cover up all the damage we can. That's like the most important thing. Uh, so all our yellows, I can put a yellow three over here. That's where I can use yellow, but on here I can't. So I could convert this stuff. Um, so I can make a one... Heroic black out of that. Uh, let's see. So we got a six. We need to cover there. Eleven. Let's see. So we have a pink six. We can cover that. Uh, so we just don't even need our ability here. Uh, let's see. So let's do... Five blue here. What's that up there? A six blue. Yeah, we have no way of covering that except for this, I guess. So we need to get to 11 on this box. So we have five. Uh, so let's convert these to a one. And this will get us to nine there. So let's go nine, 12, uh, this three up here. And what's that just, uh, I can't see, I think it's just, oh yeah, it's just, so we're going to just take a time loss. So one time loss, this didn't even matter. Unless, no, this only brings me to 10. It only brings me to 10 on there and I need to get to 11, right? Yeah, 11. So that's not enough. I wish it was because then I'd be able to cover the whole thing. So I'm just taking a time loss. Okay, that's my consequence. Sweet. So that wasn't as bad as I thought. And now we can choose to take, I, I think I want to take this ag agility. I need, I need to be rolling more dice and I need some items. So that'll give us an extra health and an extra agility roll. And I think I did all that. Convert the one in. Oh yeah. I forgot. Yes. The wild card. I always forget. I can use those to pay for this. So I could do that ability to convert that to a pink six which would have covered, where'd he go? Uh, oh, he's under here. Yeah, and that would cover the final one. Thank you so much, uh, Kazumi and Harmonize. Yes, I always forget the wild card can be used, even when I see, even when you see there's a pink here, you can put a black there. You can discard a black to get a pink six, for example, for this ability. So that is something I didn't do probably on my playthrough yesterday. That maybe made it a little tougher. Uh, but yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. So then you got to clear all your stuff, get rid of all your dice. So man, we come came through that one, except for the, the one damage we took at the start. That's all that happened there. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's slide that under. So we now can take up to six damage, and we roll in two pinks. And we can have up to three of those items on the side, so let's try to get that as fast as we can. Oh, gain two time back? I think it was only one I, I lost. I'll just shuffle this. One time, yeah, just take one time back. It was only one that I lost. I left one box uncovered. Okay. All right, two time. And then we'll go, hmm. yeah, we'll go here. Another four, so we get a heroic die. And this is a phantom. I don't think I've ever seen this guy. Ethril, immediately discard all ones and threes rolled. Ouch. And we have to cover these two shield spots before we can even cover all the damage spots. 
Oh, start of my turn. Potion drinking, sorry. I totally forgot to do that, but I definitely would do that. I was holding out till I got there. Uh, yeah, so we healed up all our health. Anyways, uh, so let's see here. Hmm. So you could, for this skill, toss away three yellow dice, including heroics, <laughs> to gain a five yellow, a five pink, and a five blue, then make one of them a six. Triple strike. That seems neat. And that would help us for the dragon fight because we could make any one of those a six and that could cover a box that does damage to the dragon. Because remember, it has to be a color die. It can't be a black die uh, to cover that uh, the hit boxes on the dragon. Elizabeth says, do you put a black die on the card on the left with the potions? I usually do to remind myself, yes, for each encounter. Because that's my bonus. You don't have to do that. It's not locked there. I just do it usually to remind myself. I usually play with a little different setup when I'm not on stream. So I can kind of see that die near my hero card. So I see these dice building up. Uh, so hopefully I remember that. But you guys will yell at me. I know you will. <laughs> so yeah, that just reminds me I have one encounter bonus. Uh, all right. So the ethereal. I don't roll a many pinks. But I feel like I still want to attempt this. I just have to make sure I cover most of the damage spots. But those are all high dice. Oh, that's rough. I only have one heroic here. Uh, uh, blues are useless. If I can get up to six blue, I can trade that in. Uh, six blue pips would be amazing. Yeah, I could trade that in for a yellow six and a pink six. Or at least a five would be good for yellow or pink. I might try this, actually. Yeah, I'm going to try this. So let's take both of our dice here, one from the Heroic, one from our Encounter. Uh, we have two pink now, three yellow, and three blue. Probably shouldn't be doing this. Oh, but you immediately discard ones and threes rolled. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should flee, actually. <laughs> uh, how much cards do we have left here? We have a few. We have a few. Hmm. I don't think the troll is any better. Would this be better, maybe? I think. I feel like fleeing. Yeah, this just his ethereal ability. Is, is, it could be super rough, but it could miss. It could be fine. But we could take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage, which for every two, we'd reduce it to one. So that would be still four damage. Mm, yeah, the losing the ones. Uh, this is a bad play, but I'm going to do it. Let's do it. YOLO. <laughs> this is a bad decision. Definitely a bad decision. Because I'm going to roll the most ones and threes you've ever seen right here. <laughs> well, one, two. So getting the blues added up are not going to happen. And what is it? A three? Uh, pink is gone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Only three dice. But still, that's that's huge. But we do got a couple sixes here. Uh, six. So let's try to mitigate it as best we can. All right. So do we have enough here? Let's see. We can convert... Yeah, let's convert this uh, to a pink six. Mm, I wish that blue was a three at least, but it would have been discarded if it was. But if it was a four, I could change it to try to cover this. Uh, let's do what we can here. So that's gone. Yeah, there's no rectangle boxes either. So we have to put something here. We have to put something here. We can prevent two damage here. We can prevent two damage here. Uh, let's prevent the time loss and the damage here. Let's prevent a damage here. And we're just missing a pink six. That's not too bad, actually. And I already used my ability. Blue two. Blue two and black. Two yellows. Oh, yeah. Combining the black. But 
I don't think that would even change it though, because, uh, oh, but I get two of them, right? Ah, oh, yeah, that's super sick. Yeah, that's correct. You can tell I'm a noob, but yes, I can convert these uh, with this force bolt ability. So this, I f see, I keep forgetting, like, it can be black dice counting as blue. So that's six, so I can gain a yellow six. So I did get what I wanted. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, and a pink six. Then the pink six slides in here. The yellow six goes over here. And you guys are awesome. Dragon, thank you so much. Like, I, I was not playing that way yesterday. I didn't have that ability, though. But uh, I don't think I actually had a magic ability like that. But I'm just forgetting that black dice can be used as any color here, not just on here. On here, I was fine. But I always forget you can trade them in there. Um, but that will come with experience, which we'll get today. So hopefully I don't keep messing that up. But thank you so much. But yeah, I like the little puzzle. Every, every time you do an encounter, a little puzzle of trying to math your dice out, use your abilities, and as you add more abilities, it gets crazier. And we only technically have one additional skill, and we still can add two more on the bottom here, according to this. Uh, which is awesome. So we got through that with no problem. That's inc that's crazy to me. That like mate is blowing me away. All right. Uh, so what are we doing with it? I feel like taking the left here. But that skill seems crazy also. Yeah, I know, Jim. I did that on that ability. I remembered. But then I, I'm doing this whole combination thing, and I forgot about black being used for blue on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just forgetting their wild card in, in, in sporadic situations. Uh, yeah. I'll admit, I'm not the brightest light bulb in the room. Okay. Uh, so what should I do here? I'm thinking of taking it for a dice and a health, but I also think that ability is pretty cool. But tossing three yellow dice, I need to find some more yellow skills then, because... I only roll three yellow dice. So that doesn't seem like the ability. This ability, if I took this skill right now, it would be for far in the future. I don't feel like it would pay off too much right away. So I feel like I want to cover my agility, especially for perils. So I think I'm going to take it in there as an item. And we have extra health. Not that I think I needed that, but worst case, I can replace it later and it becomes four experience. And I guess it does work good with our dexterity ability, so I'll have another pink to turn into a six. So, I mean, that's not the worst. And I've kind of rounded out now. I throw three yellows, three pink, three blue. Is that rounded out enough that I can fight this guy? Probably not, because uh, that's a lot of yellow I need to cover that there. Plus this over here. And then the pink. Yeah, those are high pinks. But we'll get you, Ogre. We'll get you. Eventually I'll see him. Okay. Uh, so let's toss for the next turn. One, two. I'm going to, let's see. There are, I could explore and do one more turn. Um, yeah, I want to do that. So I'm going to, um, so I did two, so I'll explore. And then I'll do my next turn. Two cards left. So I now see the stairs at the start of a turn. So how the stairs work, and I want to explain this when we got to it. While visible, I can place damage tokens here for each time spent. Each time, so the longer you take, each time there, uh, each time there are three tokens there, sorry, you place one on a hero and remove the other two. At the end of any turn, the hero's made to send. So that goes to the, down to floor two. If this card is revealed while spending time to start a turn, the hero's made to send immediately. So I just revealed it at the start of a turn, spending my two before possibly exploring, or uh, before possibly entering a room, I mean. Uh, so I could descend. Or I can risk it, stay on this floor, but I'll start putting, every time I spend, I'll start putting heart tokens on here. And for every three I get there, I take one and clear three away, basically, or clear two away or whatever. Um, but I'll stay on this floor. Maybe I'll flip another four enemy, and that can help us get a black heroic die on ourselves here. But we will see. What do you guys want, left or right? I'm going to stay on the floor and enter a room. Left or right, what do you want to see? Uh, need about eight yellow or black yellow for ogre. Oh, wow. That's a lot. But that does make sense. Left? All right. Elizabeth said left. We'll go left. Oh, Elizabeth. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So we got flame statues. They're level three. 
We can disenchant them, spend three time, try to get eight blues. And remember, we also want to try to, uh, sorry, we need to get two of any over here at least first. Or we could try to dodge them with agility, trying to get 14. Oh, I like that. I like that ability. Backstab? Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. We're going to do this. I just don't know what to choose here. Oh, and we get our black encounter bonus die. Let's not forget that. So hopefully that could cover here. Do we roll? Do we try to dodge them? I mean, worst case, we're taking two damage. And we don't want to spend time, actually, because it will add... That would be one damage if we spent the three time. So let's go with the dodge them. That way we roll less time. It's a twap! <laughs> yeah, taking damage as, as the paladin. That's what I learned yesterday from my playthrough. Gazumi's right. Because uh, every two hearts becomes only one damage against me. So that's another thing about the paladin, which I think is pretty solo player friendly, I found. Was like, even if I mistakenly go in thinking I'm going to roll high and I don't, and I take a bunch of damage, at least it's cut in half. And with the extra hearts I've gained, uh, it shouldn't get that out of control where I'll die uh, being at zero health. Uh, or zero damage to start. So we're going to try to dodge them. Because that way, worst case, I only take one time. Which only puts one heart here. Uh, and then I don't take any additional damage there. But and Then I get my bonus for being this level. Alright, we're going to try to dodge. Let's get some 14 pinks here. 14 worth of pink. We can turn one. Oh, no, we can't. This is only for combat. Only for combat. That's okay. So we can't use those abilities. No. All right, so let's throw two pink over here to get our shield. And let's take a look at what we get. Six, nine, ten, eleven. Meh, not enough. Not enough. And over here, our heroic ability we don't have. Uh, the damage thing we have. And I think that's all I can really do about that. So I'm taking uh, one time loss, which would go here. as a damage token. And then three health, but... Uh, for every two, it only becomes one, and then the extra one I'll take. So I take two damage. And then we get this awesome backstab ability. Uh, which, can I take? Yeah, I still can take two more skills. So I think I want to take the, the backstab ability. That seems cool. Help us in fights. Another way to spend pink dice. Okay. So I'm not going to... Oh, so at the end of the turn I can descend. I could go to spend two more time to do another turn, but it would give me another damage, and then I could go for another room. But I'm not going to do that. So we're going to descend. So we'll get rid of this. Take this, these cards here, and we'll go to the next floor. And, oops, let's put this on here. And how this works is we're going to go to the second floor of the Dragon's Cave. So now we have to achieve for a combat, we have to put a blue 5 at least here to prevent 2 damage and a 3 yellow here to prevent 2 damage. And then in the traps, we have to put a 2 here before we can even place other dice. And then we have to put a 6 of any color here uh, to prevent the damage. So that's the flame aura in the second level of the dungeon. It's getting, getting worse. Let's just show... <laughs> yes, Jamie, not an honorable paladina uh, stabbing people in the back. <laughs> this is true. And with all that heavy armor and big shield, I just don't see her getting around uh, behind people very quickly to stab them in the back. So it seems like that shouldn't be an ability I can take, but uh, sure. <laughs> Uh, Richard's asking where I got the heart tokens. They came in my copy of the game, uh, version 1.8, uh, at my local retailer has those heart tokens in it. And I noticed it has big plastic cubes and I've seen in other playthroughs I was watching to learn the game, uh, have like smaller wooden tokens, I think it looked like, but these are pretty big. Uh, they're like bigger than the dice, uh, white tokens. They're like dice that haven't been finished. They don't have a color or pips, but they feel like basically like dice.
Not stabbing people, they are monsters. Oh yeah, true. So we're allowed to backstab monsters. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> that's honorable. <laughs> okay, so before the floor, uh, Hall of Statues, five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so five cards off the top. Start of a turn, two time. Let's set up our rooms for an explore action. Next turn, discard two more cards. Okay, two cards discarded. Yeah, I thought older versions were wooden cubes. I, it looked like that in the videos, I thought so. Okay, uh, I will choose this one. A little goblin. Oh, I want the yellow dice. Oh, but we can spend three blue to roll a black. Mm, I'll probably just take it for this, if anything. So it's good we flipped him first because he has a swarm ability that happens right away. X here on the shield, which we have to deal with first, is worth four per open door, including this one. So we only have one open door. So I don't want to flee from him and start opening other doors because if I want to come back to him, that's a problem. So we're just going to deal with him, which I think we're fine. Uh, so we get one black for the encounter because our level two. Uh, let's go with our three yellow and our three pink and our three blue. And let's roll some dice. So all of our skills could work in this combat because it's a combat. All right. Okay. I see some fives and fours all over the place. Okay. So, let's start covering up shields. So, let's see. I'm just going to lay some stuff out here. So, we could use this yellow 5 to block there. But we also, since it's a long box, we could use like these two, two, two yellows to get our 4. We could use this 5 to cover up the 2 damage there. Uh, what else could we do? We have two fours here to cover up a damage here. What's this, a three? Yeah, I think we're okay. Uh, so we use this four for that. Uh, we can use the five black to cover up the two damage over here. And then, uh, oh, I guess I could make one of these a pink six, but I don't feel like I need that right now. Uh, so for this yellow three here and a yellow three I need up here, I could convert these two to a three heroic. And we can just throw that up there. And then I can convert these to a four heroic. And there might be way better ways to do that, but I'll just do it that way. Uh, and yeah, we cover it up. It's all good. It's all good. And we're gonna slide this guy under here to get our third item. So we're maxed out on items. So if we take a future item, we can discard one of these items to turn it into experience. <laughs> hey, Sinja. Doesn't it say open doors? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's good. All right. So let's do two more cards for time. And let's take this one. An ogre again. Well, we have four yellows. Oh, I got a black heroic die because I flipped a level four. Hmm. Hmm. And we get our encounter bonus. But now we have extra damage over here. I just, man, this guy. I feel like I need to flee. But I do have ways of rolling extra yellows over here. And then we can take up to seven damage. I say, what do I care about his ability? Pick a value. I have two attached skills, so I can take one more. But I could also just take this guy's experience, which would probably be the better call. No, I would replace this card here. 
Mm hmm. Flea. <laughs> It, it's not the perfect time to take on an ogre, but it's okay time. I just don't, I don't know about taking all the extra damage though, but it is, could be four experience or could be extra health and attack I could take and just get rid of that last attack upgrade I took. Might be pretty good actually. Hmm. Pick a value, change up to five of your dice to that, of that value to sixes. That seems pretty cool. Chaotic aura. Um, there's damage over here too. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that would be six damage total I could take if I really flop. But I don't think that would be that bad. I have a way to prevent two here. So even if I took six, I would still be alive. But it's like so early in this floor. No, we're gonna flee. We're gonna flee. And we'll draw two more cards. And we'll flip this one. A pit of spikes. Mm, the jump over again. Or climb around. I roll three pinks. Or four yellows. Feel like we climb around. So let's do this one. Oh, look at this ability. For a yellow die, I can gain a black six. You can only use it to cover boxes with the shield, which I think is not a bad thing. Yeah, let's try to get this one. All right, I'm gonna climb around. One, two, three times spent. Uh, we're gonna roll four yellow dice. We'll roll our encounter bonus. I feel like that's okay and that's enough. So that's what I'm going to roll with. Yep. Uh, ooh, two sixes. Okay, so we're going to cover up. Uh, we'll definitely cover up this six. We need something for, I don't know, this die. So we can put our shield there. And then we definitely got the eight yellow. We got like a hundred yellow. So we're good. We're good on the peril. That was a crazy roll. Nice, very nice. All right, uh, so we get nothing done to us there. I'm going to take the Armor Crush ability because I have a starting ability. I have my campaign ability, which don't count. I can go up one more. So I'm going to take Armor Crush. Yes, we crush the armor. That, that seems thematically. It makes sense, right? I'm going to do my Armor Crush. Just stomp on them with all my heavy armor and crush their armor. Okay, uh, so that's that. I don't want to heal right now, so we're going to do two more cards. And we're going to do this room. A beetle. Well, this guy's interesting. He has an ability, Survivor. If any armor, bo armor boxes are empty, discard this instead of looting it. So he's like all themed to the armor. So I got to cover every single one of these. Uh, none of these. These are fine. They're just damaged, but I still need to worry about them. So I have to... I do, I do roll three pinks. I have ways of converting... I need a blue three. I feel like that's okay. I'm going to do this guy. Let's do this guy. Let's, let's, let's attempt the beetle. Let's try to squish. Let's try to squish the beetle. It is a combat. So I have all this, this crazy ability stuff here. And the reason why I'm taking combat abilities and why I've been heavily focused on them. Actually, let me slide my card up because you guys probably can't see all that. Uh, the reason why I focus all on combat abilities is because I feel with perils. I figured this in my last game I played uh, yesterday was that if you can just get the dice up here to cover the perils, you're pretty good. Because in, in a boss fight, that ability that only does perils doesn't work. You need ones that are combat. So if I'm playing to the boss, I need to get stuff that works in combats. That's how I look at it. But uh, but this one is dual use. You could use it in both. So that would not be a bad play. But I need to toss three pink or black, whatever, just to get one black six. I mean, in a pinch, maybe? But uh, this guy's probably just going to become experience, I think. Yeah, he'll just become experience. Okay. The beetle made you bite the dust yesterday? Uh, that's possible. That's possible. <laughs> that could happen here. <laughs> okay, let's fight him. Let's, uh, 
I don't know, once you take down like a level four boss, you get like our level four enemy, you get kind of confident. And then yes, a, a level two enemy, just based on your roles and abilities, if you don't have the right stuff, could still tank you, which is kind of fun. Because uh, you get like high rolls and you're like, yeah, look, I can rock anything now. But it's like, no, you just kind of got lucky there. Or you had abilities that were better for that scenario. All right. So I don't think I'm going to use a heroic on him. It doesn't seem right. Squish the beetle. So we just got to cover all these armor boxes at least. So we have a four pink. We have a four. We have a three blue. And to cover that other pink, uh, we can change this one. Uh, no, we don't need to yet. Do we need yellows? Let's see what we got for yellows. So we have a six, we have a five, and what do we got over here? We, do we have a five blue? Nope, nope, we don't. How do we do that? So we might take a damage here, uh, but I probably have ways of doing this that I'm not seeing yet. All right, yes, I do. Uh, nope, I don't. I can cover a shield, hold on. If I have two five somehow, I can convert that to a blue five maybe. Uh, let's use the yellow ability here. Let's toss this yellow die and turn it into a black six, which I can use to cover boxes with shields. So let's cover this one. Okay. Now I need three pink there. Uh, so we can just use this four black to be three pink. Okay, that covers that. So we've covered all shields. Now I want to convert this, I think, Yeah, I think we're fine. So we'll convert this one to a heroic five. I know there's lots of ways you could do this. Uh, in this one, I'll cover this blue so we don't take damage there. Now, I will change this one to a pink six. Uh, nope, this ability. And this pink six will slide in here. And then I'll convert these. Uh, although I could throw yeah, well, it does whatever. I could do force bolt and all this stuff, but uh, let's just convert this to a black four, and we'll cover this one. Where are we? And we have this left over, so we're good. And clean up. All right, how are we taking this guy? Uh, yeah, we're just going to take him, I think, as experience. So we have two out of eight. Two more time. Uh, let's explore. Let's fill up our rooms here. Two more time. Let's pick this one. Uh, so we got a spiked log. Hmm. I feel like we'll do the agility one on this one. I feel like we'll do the agility one on this one. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we get a bonus here and we get three agility dice. Oh, but I need to do this too. Ooh. Mm. I know we can make a six out of one of them. No, this doesn't work actually. Sorry, that doesn't work in uh, traps. I forgot that. No. Let's do the yellow. We're going to do two time. And then we'll roll this and we'll roll four yellows. It's probably not one that's worth it actually. Probably should just flee from this one. But let's try to get some experience and level up. Okay, so... We don't have a single six, so we're going to be taking a damage from that one. Uh, let's see here. So we definitely have the eight we need for yellow, whatever. We can cover this too. Is there some tricks I can do here? I don't think so, because I need a full six to cover that. 
And all this is combat. This preventing damage thing is not. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> kunk, kunk. Uh, yeah, so we'll just take one damage. And that is all good, sort of. Uh, and we'll take this one just as experience, I guess. So we're at five. Should we heal? I feel like we should heal. Yes, yeah, so let's just heal at the start of the turn. Let's get rid of three. All potions are gone. Two time. Force bolt? Uh, it's only during combats. Yeah, force bolt's only during combats. Not, um, not during perils. So let's check this room here. A shadow. He's got a combat here. Oh, look at this, with a heart and a sword. Fade ability, spend time for each skill you use. Oh, oh, sneaky, sneaky. But it's three experience too that we could use to level up. And what's the next level do for us? Helps us put five items and four skills, gets us an additional potion. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. What's this one worth? That's a two, okay. Um, yeah, let's fight him. Okay. Uh, so we get four yellows. We get our bonus heroic die from our level. Three pink. Three blue. Uh, three blue, wrong. Three blue. Four yellow, three pink, three blue. Do I want to roll this now? No, not really. Okay, spending time, I guess. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so, we got to worry about these over here, too. Uh, but we need to get 10 pink before we can even place other dice. And pink looks like it's low. So, uh, let's use... Here, I'll mark these with these, actually. So, we're going to use this ability. We'll get rid of a time. Turn this to a six. Um, what else can we do with that? Actually, let me see. I might be able to do some trickery here. Uh, let me just cover up some other boxes first to make sure. So blue five, uh, this four yellow, we got a six yellow, got a blue here. This one would here maybe. Okay, but we don't need, so we're like one shy of pink, right? It's 10, no, we got it, sorry, we have it. We have it in all pink, it's only 10. What was I thinking? Maybe I was thinking of trying to use that dye different. Uh, and then we need a three blue, but we could do something here. We take, yeah, let's do it like this. So if we take this, I'm trying to avoid using skills too. So let's throw these away for a black three. That will cover here. And throw these away for a black white, uh, one, sorry, one. And that will give us our 10 pink and everything else is covered. So we're good. All right, we are good, we are good. We only use one skill, which is not bad. Only lost one time there. I was a little worried we might have to use more, but we did not. I do like this guy having a sword and extra health. I could take it and just not level up yet. But he has like the perfect amount to level up. So we're going to do that. We'll toss those away. Go to our next level. We get an additional potion. No extra black dice yet, but we can hold more items and skills. So we can hold one more skill and two more items. So two time. Let's see what we got here. Oh, another four level guy. This is the ice elemental. Before the encounter, you gotta spend three time. 
but he's a four. So we're going to get our second heroic die on here finally. And we're going to take this guy on. Let's get him, boys. All right. Let's see here. So we're going to use these two. We're going to use our bonus for our level. Four yellow. Three blue. Th uh, three pink. And we got to spend three times. One, two, and because we have to spend a third in the stairs are revealed, we'll put a heart there. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we need to get to 11 here on the shield before we can really do anything else. So let's just place some stuff here. So I'm just going to put them here for now. Four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Over 11, <laughs> 13. So those are yellows, but we can probably do it a little better. Uh, let's see what else we can get here, unless we have everything else covered. So we can put a four blue here, a five blue over here to block five uh, two damage. We could do a yellow three here, but it's black, that's fine. Uh, we don't need pinks or anything, so we can start converting those. Let's see, can we get some of those blues covered? Got a couple damage here. Mm. Might have to eat the blues. Let's see here. We can actually toss a yellow three uh, with this first ability here. Turn it into a black six, which can cover the shield spot. So that will buy us a few extra spare dice here. And we need to get up to 11 there. So we could still need to put these here. So we got this back in the pool. Yeah, five or six is on blues. There's got to be a way. Because we can convert a pink to a six. Might as well do that, right? Okay. Uh, oh, the blue, we can throw away enough blue. How do we do this? If we can combine the blue, we can get... If I combine this to six, I can get a yellow six and a pink six, which could help me combine with this to get a black six. Mm. This I can also do more things with. Six. Yeah, let's start doing that. Uh, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I? Why would I combine that? That doesn't make any sense. Whatever. I can roll two yellows. Yeah, let's turn a pink since we don't need pink. I'm gonna throw this one away uh, for this other ability. And we're going to roll two yellows. A six and a four. Yes, that's good. All right. So we're going to toss away these two to turn them into a black uh, six. Okay, I think we can get there. So we got our yellow definitely covered uh, of at least 11, more than enough. Uh, and now we can cover this five, we can cover this six, we can cover this five, and we definitely cover this. I went overboard, I know, I know, but we're, we got it all covered. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. It does need to be on the shield spot. I'm sorry. You guys are right. Uh, you guys are right. Yeah. You guys are right. That black does need to be on a... I forgot about that. It does need to be there. But can we do some other trickery then? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I don't know why I took that off there. So we need to be up to 11 there. 9. Let's say that's there. Okay, let's see what we got here. This, I don't remember what it was, but it probably was something different. I bumped it. 
uh, and this was probably different. I started moving dice and rolling them around, so I don't know. But we got a yellow here. We can combine. Did I do the magic ability already to combine? Whatever. We'll, we'll combine however it needs to be done. Yeah, we can throw away the blues, right? To get the pink and the yellow six. Did I already do that one? I don't think so. I had a six from rolling, right? And then I'll combine these to a black six. And then we cover that blue spot. I think all that was fine. Force bolt is the answer, yes. Yes. So I use all my abilities. I think I got there. I did bump some dice there at the end because I thought I was done. But I think either way I still had enough. Uh, the one I used, I, I rolled two yellow dice uh, and, and got a six and a four. And then I combined those. I'm pretty sure I didn't change any blue in uh, and use force bolt because I still have two blue here. And I just traded one in. So I don't think I used force bolt already. Otherwise, I wouldn't have three blue dice still. Like, that wouldn't make sense, right? Unless I'm being crazy. All right. So I apologize to all the veterans out there who watch me do things very inefficiently, but I'm, I have fun with this. There is always a better way to do things. Everything fine now? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's always a better way than I do, for sure. I'm okay with that. I'm not the best player in the world of anything. So that is all good. And neither are you. All right. Okay. So we are taking this away. And what are we doing with this guy? So we need 10 points to level up to the next one. And what do we get for that? Oh, we can get two black dice to use. We get another potion. But like, do I... Yeah, I mean, that's nice. But I like to have agility and another health. Why not? Or what's his ability? Ooh, that ability, throwing away two yellows to roll two pink and another yellow. If you roll like two low yellows, that could be helpful. A flurry. Hmm. Do I need more health? I don't really need more health. But I'm going to roll into more dice. I want to roll more dice. One, two, three, four. One more item. Here's the thing. Do I fight the troll? Or do I just descend? I feel like I fight the troll. I would get two more hearts here and take a damage. But then the troll could do a whole bunch more damage to me. I'm rolling a lot of pinks now. Like four pinks, four yellows. I don't have any heroic dice though. No, I think I will descend. Yeah, let's descend. We'll fight the troll later. Yeah, we're going to descend. We got there. Okay. So we have no damage on us, which I feel good about. Oh, yeah. If we do level up, though, we get more check marks on the campaign log. Hmm. Hmm. You don't get extra check marks for having more items and more skills, but those items and skills lead to you killing bosses better. And those lead to three check marks. And if we can reach the boss, because we're playing on standard, we get an additional check mark. So that would be good. And yeah, you got here in time. We're going to be playing another one. Oh, we're not almost done. I'm doing another play after this at least, if not more. Yeah, yeah. We're going to play. We're going to play a couple times at least today. So don't go anywhere. We got more coming. And if you just showed up, don't worry. We're playing another one. We're, we're grinding four check marks on our campaign log today. We're going to get leveled up. We're going to get some more abilities. We're going to try a medium uh, boss, which I want to do. Uh, so yes, this is just kind of like a warm up. And I've already learned more about this game from you guys. And I, I love that, that you guys have shown me, reminded me that black dice can also be used for abilities. Kazumi, no worries. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here. Enjoy your stroll. Enjoy your stroll. I'll be strolling through the dungeon. <laughs> okay, so let's cut. Need more dice. <laughs> okay, uh, so we are going to lose. Uh, oh, yeah, we're on the next level. 
So now we have to do all this business when we fight Perils. Uh, so there's another shield now actually on Perils. Uh, and then we're going to lose five cards because of the Hall of Statues. Five. And then uh, two more cards to start the turn. And get our dungeon ready. Yeah, we definitely need to roll more dice, I think, too. Some more yellows for the dragon. Remember, we're trying to work towards this guy. And I feel like our pinks might be okay, because remember we can throw blacks in there. But remember, you have to get a, a natural six uh, pink, blue, or yellow to go on these spots to even hit the boss. You cannot use black heroic dice. And then if we don't want to take a whole bunch of damage, we need to be rolling lots of blue and lots of yellow. So I think our blue game is kind of, kind of light. So let's get our blue game up. Our magic. Let's get our magic going. Let's become a mage knight. <laughs> All right. Uh, so two more. Okay. Uh, let's pick this one. Uh, another wraith. Another wraith. Before the encounter, convert one item to XP. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. I'll just convert the other uh, sword one and I'll just replace it with this. Yeah, let's let's fight this guy. Hopefully we can get to nine on uh, the shield here. Yeah, let's fight this guy. I think. Mm. We do need yellows though. No, I'm going to flee. I'm going to flee. I'm going to flee. He's not worth it. So next turn. Let's do this one. Uh, locked door. Oh, there's a blue. We need some blue. So let's bash it open. Let's bash it open. So we get one bonus encounter die. Uh, we get four yellows in this die. And let's try to bash. Oh, this is going to be a little rough though. That's okay. Let's bash it open. Let's try. Whoops. Uh, let's roll that in here. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> interesting. So, did we get a five? Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to put that yellow five over there, or else we can't even put any other dice. Uh, we need a two. Did we get to the 11? No, we only have 10 right here. I don't have any peril trickery. This is the problem. I'm okay. I take perils on the chin. It's the way I play. I don't know. Yeah, I think. Or am I missing something here? Need 11. No. Even if I converted that, I still just cover that. Yeah, so I'm just going to take two damage and two time loss. I don't know, there's maybe something I could have done there, but whatever. All right, uh, so this one I'm going to take as I can take five items. So this is going to be my fifth item. Let's roll an extra blue. All right, two more time. Yeah, I didn't take any peril skills. I don't usually value them. I don't know if that's a bad thing. At least on this dragon run. Maybe I should more often though. Uh, let's see this one. Uh, it's a four, so we get a heroic. It's a fire elemental flames. Before the encounter, place the damage on the hero. This is a guy we beat before, right? I think. Let's try it. Let's try it. So we'll take these two dice. Four yellow. We got four blue now. And four pink. And did I put the damage on me yet? I don't think I did. Okay. Let's roll all the things. Okay. Um... Let's start by taking this three yellow and we're going to cover up this bottom ability and we're going to turn it into a black six 
that I can put on this shield spot only. Okay. Let's take this one pink and we're going to convert it to a six. Okay. Oops. Place are so small. Uh, six. We're going to take this two pink and we're going to roll two yellows. A five and a three. Okay. That's done. And now the magic business. Let's see here. The magic blue is where I'm going to have some trouble. But like this one. Uh, let's see. Probably do some stuff with the force bolt. Okay. Let's see here. So we need four more yellow. Let's just take a yellow four. We've covered up our shield. Uh, we'll take this three yellow. Prevents damage there. We will. Um, I don't need all this yellow. So let's start converting stuff. Pink. I have two pinks here. Those are kind of useless. Six up there. Okay, those are covered. The sixes are covered. Now the blue, if we just look at base, what we have, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have just enough for blue there, but we don't have a blue here to cover that. That's okay. So let's just start mashing some things together. So let's turn these two pinks into a heroic. Oh, I forgot a one black die over here. Whoops. So let's convert those two. I mean, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's still fine. Uh, let's trade this in with Force Bolt. Get a three yellow and a three pink. So we can cover this pink. We'll just trade two of these in for a three black. Just cover that. And then all the rest is covered by these. I don't know. There's other ways. Oh, there's a five over here. Let's convert those two into a five. Heroic and cover that. There we go. We're all good. We got there. Done. Done, done, done. All right. So... What are we doing with this guy? On agility again, change any or all of your dice to fours. That's kind of neat. We can take one more skill, but I do like this magic and a health. I can have five there. So let's do, let's just change this one out. Throw this one in. Mm, but I don't know. That's kind of good. I can change a whole bunch of ones and twos and threes to fours. That seems kind of crazy, actually. I'm going to actually take that as a skill. That'll be good on the boss fight, I think. One, two, three, four. Four skills. This one's our default. Yeah, that's how we'll do that. All right. Uh, let's spend a potion. Just get rid of this three damage. Okay. Uh, draw on two. One. Two. Let's check this one. It's a bandit. It's a guy we have backstabbed from already, so we can't take that. Uh, dodge. Making a combo die uses three dice instead of two. Well, that could be a little rough. Is he worth the three experience, though? Yeah, sure. Let's fight him. Let's fight him. Four yellows. We get our encounter bonus. Uh, we get four blues. Four pinks. And let's do it. Okay. Uh, so, 
we got to cover up some shields over here. We can use a six and we can use a four. And that covers that. Uh, now let's see, we got a five here. FCO dot Javier Fernandez. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, okay. Let's see here. We'll leave that for a sec. Can we get the eight and a three covered in pink here? So we don't take that damage. Six. A three. Can we get a five blue? We can get a five blue. Can we get a four pink? Yep. And now this yellow, hmm, because it takes three dice, the most I can get is a black. Oh, but we got force bolt. We got abilities out the yin yang. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got lots of abilities I haven't even used yet. So we could throw this one in here. And we need just a three, three yellow. So let's just do this instead. Let's uh, trade this yellow in for a black six, which we can use to cover on the armor, whatever. And then we throw this yellow up here. I don't know. There's so many things, so many things, but we don't have to combo anything. So that dodge ability doesn't really hurt us. Uh, and this will just become, I can't take backstab again. How much experience is on this blue? Two. All right, let's throw this here as experience. So three out of 10. And yeah, we could have traded a pink for a bunch of fours. Yeah, there's lots of ways that it could go there. So many, so many ways, so many ways, which I like, that's fun. It's fun to try to use all your abilities as efficiently as possible. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm just going to take a break for a couple minutes. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. We're good. Ready for some more one deck dungeon delving. All right. Uh, for those who have played this game and have played the game that this reminds me of, has anyone ever heard of Dungeon Roll? This game reminds me of Dungeon Roll a little bit, but this is like be way better than Dungeon Roll. Dungeon Roll is like too simple, but same kind of idea. Push your luck, trying to go further in a dungeon, rolling little tiny dice. Came in like a little cardboard chest. One of the first games I ever bought at, at one of my first Gen Cons. I remember grabbing it just because it looked cool, but then it was like very simple and not that exciting. But yeah, this reminds me of that a lot. Just being a small box fantasy dungeon diving game. Similar. I forget. That one was by... I forget. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dungeon Rolls. <laughs> yes, I've not played. Yeah, don't worry about ever playing Dungeon Roll. You never need to play it. It's just something I grabbed. I was like, oh, this looks cool. I didn't know much in the hobby at that time. And was like, yeah, this looks neat. And then I played it and was like, oh, that's it? Oh. <laughs> And this I thought would happen with this. That's what I thought might happen with this one, but uh, it's definitely not so far. It's not as lame. But uh, yeah. All right, where were we? We were, I'm assuming end of a turn. Uh, we just fought something and took, we got experience off somebody, bandit. All right, let's do two more cards. One, two, whoops. And let's reveal. Or let's uh, explore. Okay, two more cards. And let's look at this one. A skeleton. Undying. If any boxes are empty, spend two time. Yeah, whatever. Let's fight this guy. All right, so we get a counter bonus. Counter bonus. Uh, four yellows, four blues. And four pinks. Okay. Um, so we got a couple shields here we have to cover first. And we have these ones up here. So let's try to focus on that right now. Uh, yellows are not really hitting. Uh, so let's take one of our low yellows. Let's take this yellow and we'll make it a black six, which we can use on this 10 box here. And we can put this four yellow with it. Um, yeah, we might be spending some time here. Because the yellows did not roll that high, but we can spend, we don't really need much pink. So let's just stick this pink here for now. And then we're gonna take this um, we're going to take this one pink and we're going to roll two yellows. Patrick, thank you for subscribing. Oh, we got a six and a two. Six and a two in yellow. Okay. Oh yeah, we can change any and all of... I should have done that first, actually. Do we need... We don't need any more pink, so let's do that. Let's, let's change this pink to a six. Okay, let's take this pink and change this to a four, this to a four, this to a four, and this to a four, and this to a four, and this to a four. And this to a four. That looks better. <laughs> uh, that's a cool ability. Wow. Pretty crazy. All right, so let's get a yellow six by, we have one here. Might not even need to, but let's take one blue magic die to get a six pink and a six yellow. Oh yeah, we're crushing this guy. Let's crush. Whoop. <laughs> crush. Crush. What's in the top here? A two, a four. Sure, whatever. We got you. We got you. Yeah, like we like this is crazy. Like that, that. Oh man, this is. Yeah, some of these higher level abilities are crazy. <laughs> Most OP skill for Rob: change his role of Yahtzee ones into Yahtzee fours. Yeah, that seems, that seems crazy. I didn't take that one when I played before. I don't even know if I ever beat that guy or fought that guy. 
Maybe I maybe I just got uh, I looked at the blue and the heart, uh, the magic and the heart, and was like, yeah, that seems really powerful. But yeah, that ability is better than I thought. So yeah, it just adds so many more pips, and and on the boss it'd be helpful because he has like rectangle bars where you could just throw as much in there as you want. So just extra pips or extra pips. That is great. Yeah, convert all fours. That yeah, that's I, I didn't evaluate it to be that good, but that is yeah, that's gonna be crazy handy. Especially when you combine a bunch of those fours into black, assuming you have any left, uh, the heroic fours, and then cover up other colors that you don't have, maybe. Okay, uh, so what can we take? We can have five items. We have five items. We can take no more skills. Let's just throw him to experience, I think, because our other yellow is just to experience also. Yeah, let's just throw him as experience. So we're at five experience, halfway there to level four. Let's see if we can get there before we're diving, which I don't know if that can happen, but let's spend two cards. Oh, let's clear all this stuff. Okay, let's spend two cards, one more. All right, let's go here. Hopefully we can get, uh, oh, heroic don't matter for the boss, yeah. Uh, two. All right, let's just take it on, whatever. Try to get our experience. Hopefully we can, maybe we grab this guy for a for sure three next. Yeah, we have two cards I think left there. So let's let's deal with this. Um, so let's try to run through. Let's try to run through. So even though it might be bad, we're gonna do four. We get an encounter bonus of a black. Let's just try, I mean, we, we need all this too, so. Could take some hits here, but I just want that to experience maybe. Uh, even getting to four though, is it really gonna matter? Like, it gets us the two black, an extra black die. Oh, it gets an extra potion. But we're not gonna be able to attach more skills and items, I think, at that point. So it's kind of like maybe a waste, but yeah, whatever. Hopefully we just don't take too much damage and stuff. Uh, okay, so we got six, six. Yeah, that's actually. Uh, so a two. And I guess a five. Or let's see here. Uh huh. So if we cover it that way. We just take a damage, and then we have 12 for this. Yeah, I'll take a damage. And then we'll just get the experience. Uh, going up to five, six, seven out of 10 needed. All right, two cards. And what should we do? Do we do the uncovered room? But if it's only two, we can't get enough. If it's a four, we get an extra heroic die. If it's a three, perfect. But we have a three sitting right here. So I probably, oh, but this guy before the encounter, he makes me burn an item into XP. Oh, so I could turn one of my three experience items. Do I have one? Nope. Nope. I don't want to burn one of the ones with health, but I, I could. No. I'll risk it. Who cares? Let's just, let's risk it. We won't do this guy. He's a jerk. I don't want to lose an item right now before a boss. Get out of here. We're going to do a new one. Oh, <laughs> no way. It's another wrath. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at this jerk. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So if we were to lose an item on the dragon, what would we lose? An agility, I think. One of the agility ones. And if we do that, it becomes XP. That's a four. That's a four. Yeah, do we lose an agility? We'll take an attack. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but we'll have one less agility for the boss. That's the problem. And that's good for our abilities. No, we'll just lose the one that gives us attack. Let's not worry about getting the extra. Yeah, we'll just take this as an attack back. A 
karma. I know. <laughs> uh, one short on the level up. Unless I... Uh, do I do it? Actually, that potion might be helpful. The potion and the extra black die, I think, are more important. Yeah, that's probably the right way to do it. Let's just get rid of one of these level four guys. Yeah, we'll keep the yellow. It's less pinks, which makes me a little worried because of our abilities, but I can use the black dice also as pink, so I think that's better. And getting a potion uh, seems like that could be very good. All right, so this will become experience. So we'll deal with that leveling up at the end here. So we're fighting this one. They both have different, actually, skills, but we're attempting this guy. So encounter bonus. Four yellows. Four blues. And only three pinks now. Which that hurts, but that's okay. All right, let's roll it up. Let's roll it up. Yes, yes, yes. If you don't level, just fleet. No, we're going to level. Let's do it. Just go down. Don't bother. I know I should have, but this is more funny. I will try this. So, let's see here. So, we need to... Uh, what can we do? We can, let's do first the changing everything to fours. Four, you get a four, you get a four, you get a four, you get a four. You get a four. You get a four. Okay. Now... Uh, let's use a yellow. Yeah, we'll use a yellow four to gain a black six, which will have to be used on a shield space. Yeah, we can do it there. We'll throw another yellow four with it. That shield's taken care of. Uh, we need nine in the blue. So let's just throw ten there for now. Uh, nope. Maybe we do extra there, so we can throw... This here for damage. Uh, six here. There. There. What do we need? A five yellow? Uh, sure. We'll roll two yellows with that pink. Actually, no. We'll convert this pink into a six pink. And then we'll just convert this to a six black. Oh, no, 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 no. What was it? Six pink. What was the other color I had? Was not. That was a pink, right? Two six pinks. Because I forgot I have this guy still up here for damage. What's this guy? Five yellow. Yeah, let's just roll. Eh. Hmm. There's probably a way out of this. Convert a blue. I convert this. Lisa. Henry on. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Thank you for becoming a producer of Rob's Gaming Table. Thank you for the support. Uh, so, we have a black six. Uh. So, I know I can get some extra dice for two ways here. But I, I like need this blue here. I can combine these two to a black. Hmm. Let's first. No, I need that there. Like I can, I can convert these to a, a black six. Put it on force bolt. Make 
a yellow six and a pink six, but that only covers one of these. I need to cover this yellow here. That's the problem. I can make two extra yellow dice first by spending yeah, let's try this. Let's push our luck. Let's push our luck on rolling two more yellows. A five and a three. Is that exactly what I need? Oh my god, it is. Wow. <laughs> ah, <laughs> did it. Got there. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate the kind words. Okay, uh, that is that. We covered all that up. Let's get these off here. Let's get these off here. Now this guy... He is going to become a yellow sword. Uh, another item for me, rolling more yellow dice, which will be good on the boss. Five yellows seems good. Now we level up. These go away. This goes away. We get a potion. Uh, for reaching this level. Now we get two black dice for an encounter bonus. Yeah. And we're going to descend. So this stuff's all gone. This is gone. And it's dragon fight time. One potion. We can use it for a two heal in the fight. Seems good. All right. So let's figure out what we're doing to this guy here. We're just going to roll all of the dice. So on the dragon, let's recap. We need to get two fives in pink or black heroic dice. And to do damage to him, we need to have natural sixes. We can't use wild card dice on the ones on the right here. To hit these skulls and that will do damage back to him and we need to try to put out as many pips as possible in this spot here so that we don't take damage back but remember our heroic ability uh, doesn't work but our other skill armor does uh, works in combat where every two damage I take I prevent one of it all right so let's try this guy okay so two of these I get every round as an encounter bonus I think that works for that uh, and <laughs> Facing the dragon. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so I am going to roll that. Uh, roll five swords. Treat, you mean eat? <laughs> okay. And three pink and four blues. And we'll get rid of those. I think that's what we're rolling. Looks like that's what we're rolling here. And we have a total of seven health, and we got one damage. All right, first round against the dragon. Let's see what we can do. And and we no longer have to worry about any of the dungeon level stuff, obviously, because that would be when you're on the different floors. But now we're fighting the dragon. You flip it and ignore all that stuff. Whoops. All right. Uh, what's this? This is like a half and half here. It's a one. Okay. Uh, hmm. Those don't look like great rolls. If only I can convert a bunch of things into fours. But don't. It doesn't look like we have a single six. <laughs> so we can convert to do that. So let's throw everything to a four. I think. Uh, I think that's like there's no reason why not to that I can think of. So let's spend this one pink. I don't know. I need two five pinks actually to get started here. So I think I'll convert one to a six to start. And we have this five black. So this lets us even start, but do I have fives? I don't have fives. We could roll some other dice though to see. So let's let's save this pink six. We might maybe be able to use it for uh, other things. We'll see. So let's convert everything to fours. Uh, so we'll spend this one. Actually, let's start covering up. Let's start covering up. Let's spend a pink. Convert. This yellow to a four, this one to a four, this one to a four. This looks like a, not a great turn, but we'll see. Uh, 
a lot of fours. So what I want to do, I only have one five, but if I can convert with another five, the only way I know, oh yeah, I can convert, sorry, yellow, I forgot about that. Let's convert a yellow into a black six, which I can use on the shield spaces. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Let's throw that there for now. We're going to take this pink and we're going to roll two other yellows. Hopefully you get a six yellow and we can hit the boss man. I probably should have not done the change to fours till after I rolled, but that's my bad. All right, so I got a two and a five. That's okay. And then uh, the blues though, I can trade in two blues. Oh, I see. Two blues with force bolt to gain a yellow six and a pink six. So that way I can take that one back, put that one there. This yellow six can go there. No other way to get the hit on blue, but that's fine. All right, so can we get to 16 on blue? Probably not, but we can try. Uh, nine, 13, yeah, 17. Okay, that's the blue damage at me covered. And I think yellow worked good with 17. Uh, nine, 13, 17. What do we have there? Just a six blue not covered. I'll take it. That's good. We don't get hit for anything. I'm pretty sure maybe the other ways I could do it. But we do hit the dragon twice. So dragon has two damage. Take that dragon shadow. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I should have done all the rolling stuff before converting. That's my my bad. But in this case, I don't think this made too much of a difference because I only rolled the two yellows and like. Yeah, I wouldn't have, only one of them, I would have just got two extra pips, but I, I didn't need them in this case, so it was fine. But yeah, you're right. Efficiency first. Never trust dragons. <laughs> they always try to fly with their unusually large bodies like fruit flies. <laughs> so I take a hit back from the dragon, because I didn't cover up the blue six. And we get all of these back. Let's see here. Okay. Round two, dragon, let's go. All right, two encounter bonus. Uh, we get four blues, three pinks, five yellows. So let's try to do it in the correct order this time, or as best we can. We'll take this. See, here's the problem. This can become a six. I mean, or actually, this one yellow can become a black. A six, which we can use to cover up a shield spot. Did I roll? I didn't roll, did I? Yeah, I got to roll. What am I doing? Brain fart, brain fart. Derp -a derp. I was like totally spaced out. No, I didn't even roll my dice. Uh, yeah, brain fart. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yes. Yeah, for some reason, I was like playing like I had rolled and that was what was in front of me. Why did I do that? All right. I'm just losing my mind. I'm like deep in thought here. Already like strategizing. Okay. Um, so that's not the greatest. So let's do what we were just doing. Let's convert a pink to a six. Let's convert a yellow to a black six, which has to go on a shield spot. That's fine. Let's take this pink two and roll two yellows, a four and a four. Um, I th 
think we just take this one and turn it. Will I get to the five pink though? Yeah, I'll have to use that on here, I think. Oh, no, I won't. No, I won't. Uh, all right, so let's do the conversion thing. Change any dice to fours. So those are fours. This is a four. This is a four. All right, let's take a couple blues. And we'll convert that to a yellow six and a pink six. So that's good. Yellow six for some damage. Just can't get a blue six, eh? That's okay. Blue, we have eight. Eight is the 16 we need on the blue to prevent us getting hit. Right? <laughs> Do you even roll, bro? <laughs> Wow, I'm just, it's because you go through the motions like over and over again and like I just was like already like, all right, let's just get the next round going. Uh, spaced out. All right, so 17. Uh, 10 plus 8 is 18. We're good. All right, so we take one damage again from the dragon and he takes two. Boom, boom. All right, dragon has two damage left and he's dead. All right, so let's put them all away. That's what I normally do. Let's put them all away. Okay, put them all away. Now let's collect our dice again. Uh, so two black for the encounter. Okay, let's get in our hand. Five yellows. Four blues. Three pinks. I think it's two. It, I don't know if that counts as a start of a turn. Because it's here's like start of a turn, you're spending two time. But I don't know in a boss fight, is it like, I feel like you're already in the encounter. Between rolls is three? You can do that? If that's the case, let's see. Let's see if we can find the boss stuff. It says it's a new round. Gather and roll dice just like a combat encounter. Uh, when you descend to the third floor of the dungeon, flip over the cards. It's time to fight the boss. The boss fight consists of multiple rounds. The boss has a health value and a special ability along the bottom of his card. After each round, the party will deal damage to the boss. Is that a new turn? It's a new round. It doesn't say it's a new turn. If you play the app, it's three also. I'll take it. Dragon, I'll take it. That's all I need to hear. That's good. That's how the app works. Uh, we'll assume the designer has checked that, and that's how it should work. Yeah, I'm not going to look it up. But I, I, bet, I bet there's forum posts on that, too. Uh, but we'll go with that. All right, so, sure. Start of the round. We'll take a potion. Heal. It's good to know, I guess. Uh, okay, so let's roll. Let's roll, let's roll, let's roll. Oh, yes, and you use encounter dice each time, right? So that would make sense, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, blue sixes? We got the blue sixes this time. Yes, yes, let's just put that there. That feels good. All right, so we need some pinks, though. Uh, so let's turn one pink into a pink six. We'll see if we can get some pink fives, though. We have a black five and then we can convert what was it a yellow let's convert a yellow into a black six that we can only put on a shield space i think we got the boss just have to make sure we don't die uh which i think we're okay we got a yellow six here and then for blue 11 12, 13, 14. We're too shy on the blue right now. Let's check the yellow. 5, 10, 14. So let's do some shenanigans. Uh, we haven't changed all of our dice yet. So let's do that. Let's spend a pink. Change this to a 4. This to a 4. Okay, do we get enough with the blue now? 10, 15. Yeah, we got enough on the blue. Uh, and then we'll turn this into roll 
I know we could use the blue to get higher pink and yellow also. Uh, so the yellow now is at 15. Yeah, we definitely have enough with the yellow, more than enough. And the blue, what did I say, 10, 15, 19. Yeah. So flawless turn there and didn't even have to use all of our skills. Boom. So the dragon takes two, three. The dragon takes three. I take none. And a winner is me. So that was just standard difficulty. I beat him yesterday on the novice one or whatever. So let's get some check marks and let's pick a different dungeon slash boss to fight for another run. <laughs> uh, so I hope those that are saying it's hard and they can't beat the dragon that you were saying earlier. Uh, hopefully there was something there that like the way my choices and stuff maybe will help you out. Like I know Elizabeth was saying that she didn't realize once you take a new skill and it gets tossed, another skill gets tossed when you hit your max. Uh, it goes as experience. But yeah, that helps. I find just focus on your, your character, load them up with as many skills and dice as you can first, and then worry about the leveling up after. At least that's the way I treat it. But yeah. But that works against the dragon. I don't know if that works with the paladin against other, or with different characters and different uh, bosses, so we'll find out. Uh, so that's gone. Let's just reset up here. Oh yeah, I should have flipped this over too, by the way. Yeah, this answers the question of the potions. You can use your potions during any round of the boss fight. I forgot to flip the card to the boss fight side of the turn reference card. If you must spend time during the boss fight, exile a die instead. That I didn't know. And exiling a die means taking it out of your pool of dice and like putting it back in the box. So you have less dice to pick from. So if I need to convert a die to like a pink and I've run out of pink, too bad. So you got to do things in certain orders to get dice back to your pool if you need to pull them because they are limited. Uh, it's fight like a, count, uh, a combat encounter, fought over multiple rounds. Each round you resist poison, but that's only an expansion. You roll dice, use skills, suffer this, yep. There is no use, uh, there is no use heroic feat step in the boss fight, so you don't get to use that. And your experience levels and counter bonus provides dice during each round. So this answers the questions we had. They're right here on the reference sheet. <laughs> they're right here on the reference sheet. <laughs> if I just had flipped it, we would have not had those questions come up. There you go. And it does still say the same potion here, uh, which heal damage from one hero at the start of a turn. Three, or sorry, three damage and then two anytime. Uh, let's see. Rob got carried by the change one to threes to four skill for sure at the end there. Yeah, that was very powerful. Uh, I'm not sure if I sent applause or washing hands. Oh yeah, that does look like washing hands, the emoji. <laughs> Harmarai Har says, is the hard bosses possible outside of the campaign? I've never managed to do it. I don't know. I've never played anybody but the dragon. It was only like my second third technically playthrough, but the one I played before I probably didn't even play right. That was a long time ago. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Alright. So next. Let's do a medium. And what do you guys want to see? What do we attempt? Should we attempt the Yeti's Cavern or the Hydra's Reef? And here they are. So for the Paladin, based on default stuff, I have more yellow dice and I have more blue. Does that matter at this point though? I feel like these are pretty even, except for this guy is more about the agility. This guy's gonna be tougher, I think, cause like pink dice, you need 13 here. Before placing damage, remove one damage from Hydra for each visible uh, skull. So every time I don't do three hits, he heals one. That's crazy. Hydra. You guys want the Hydra? Whoops. And then what's this one? The Yeti. 
All ones rolled are immediately discarded. Oh, this guy's only five health to defeat. So, I mean, but the healing kind of makes him like, probably like a nine. Uh, then the six here. Uh, all ones rolled are immediately discarded. Ouch. So that's before I get to mess with them. Oh, that's tough. That's, uh, that's a little harsh. So you guys want the Hydra? I see votes for the Hydra. I see Dragon says the Yeti. Uh, yeah, we're going to do the check marks. I just wanted to pick this, but yeah, we'll get there. Actually, let's look at that, because that might change what we do, right? Uh, where is it? Been? Okay, so how many check marks do we get? We get uh, right here. We get one extra for that difficulty level, right? So one. We completed three floors, so now we're up to four. We leveled up once, twice, three we got to four, right? One, two, three. We leveled up three times. So that's seven check marks. And then we defeat the boss, it's another three. So 10 check marks. But I'm only allowed to check off green spaces. I can only check off green spaces. So I could get the have an extra health durability one. I could finish that off. But where do I start spending my others? Do I try to get my peril game up and go dungeon and fill this out? And then I have cunning where I can change a five to a six on that. But like, I have to make sure I have a five. Do I go combat and do this guile? And in a combat, I can use a yellow as a pink. That actually seems good for my paladin. But only in combat though. Or I could be prepared, start each game with an extra potion. That seems good too. But as a paladin... I feel like the potion spread was fine, but again, we're going to a harder dungeon now, so like, I, I don't know. What are you guys thinking in the chat? Yeti for sure. Yeti, Yeti for Dragon's Revenge. Yeah, I'll do the Yeti. I see more Yetis now. Yeah, we'll go Yeti. We'll go Yeti. The Yeti has his retirement party tomorrow night. Yeti, next week, is going. he's going fishing. <laughs> Hydra make, makes a pretty unconvincing dragons, but Yetis, who doesn't like a Yeti? Lisa thinks Guile. I feel that could be powerful, especially if I focus on getting more yellow items. I could use it to help abilities if I take similar abilities again. Remember, I'm starting from scratch again. So I have 10 points. So I could... I don't care about the durability, actually. I don't even know why I put a check there. I just did that. I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah. Combat, uh, combat or dungeon, but I could also start on these other ones. I could start on something else, right? Combat is probably best route for me. Uh, Kazumi usually goes healing. But Kazumi, do you go healing though with the paladin? That's my question. I, I don't think I would go crazy with the healing for the paladin. I seem okay. But again, that was a standard difficulty uh, basic dungeon. That was like a basic dungeon, right? So it's like, I don't know. I like dungeon trees since it has a lot of skills are for combat and not perils. Yeah, like I, I like going for the skills in the game that have combat. Because they're good for boss fights. But this could help me along the way not get hit so much in the perils. Hey, Vinyl. Yeah, we won our first playthrough. We're doing a second playthrough now. We're doing a second playthrough. We're just trying to figure out how to spend my leveling up points here of 10. Combat says Jim. Now, what do I start checking? Do I do I go for Guile? Do I start planning for one of these instead? Reroll re -roll all your ones and twos on yellows. Gain a three black. Oh, you, yeah, you go heavy in losing health early. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, combat. I'm going combat. I see, see more recommendations for combat. I'll, I'll, I'll start getting stuff in there. But remember, you can buy check marks anywhere, and then before each game, you pick whether you do basic plus combat or basic plus healing or basic plus dungeon. Um, so you can change it up later. So let's spend... Let's spend six of those in Guile. Gotta remember we have this ability while we're playing too, I might forget. Uh, four more check marks.
Black dice. Black dice says vinyl. Yeah, we can start putting check marks in that one for planning. Yeah. So we got Guile. We unlock Guile. So I just don't know where to start putting my other check marks. I think. I think I'm going to start putting it. <sighs> yeah, let's start just doing fortitude, I guess. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we can spend four more check marks, unlock fortitude, which will reroll all your ones and twos maybe after this one, depending how far we get. And you don't have to beat the boss to get check marks. You can just grind, where you can just play and play, pick a hard boss, and just try to get as far as you can, get as many check marks as you can. Uh, so let's check off. We did a second game. Not that I really care about how many games I play. I'm just going to have some fun with this and try out some of these abilities and see can we beat all the bosses eventually. And we'll continue this into tomorrow's stream too, so... Uh, we'll carry that on, make it, make it more meaningful, which I think is fun, rather than just doing two random playthroughs. The re-roll? What was the re-roll? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, the re-roll is what I did, yes, fortitude, yeah, 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 okay. All right, so, do we want to change up our skill, or did we feel that was good? I liked Force Bolt, that was cool. I think so. Yeah, I think we stay with Force Bolt. That was like very good for our character, I think. Yeah, we'll just ride Force Bolt out here and see. Uh, so we gotta remember, we can use a yellow die as a pink. We gotta remember we can do that. Try to keep that nearby. So we're going Yeti. So rolling ones with the Yeti. All ones rolled are immediately discarded. Yeah, I don't know if that what would that would override, but oh, so for the Yeti's Cavern, sorry, the first floor, freezing winds. If an encounter's consequence include uh, at least three time, add a heart to them. So for every time I see at least three um, sand timers printed on a consequence box, uh, I add a heart to it. <coughs> Excuse me. And look at this. We need to get blues. Blues are crazy. Oh, man. And over here, look at this. Four to prevent that. So, yeah, it's definitely definitely higher difficulty. That's for sure. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hydra, don't need a Hydra, don't need a Dragon. These guys are all cards to go in the deck, right? Yep, that's there. Uh, Oh yeah, we get a random card off the top too, right? Because we're playing standard difficulty. Uh, so we'll do that in a sec. Hopefully get another four drawn. That would be awesome. Oh, no way. We did. Oh, this is the same one too. Uh, force wall. There's probably a couple though. Oh, that's a good ability actually. Uh, trading in six worth of blues to get a six yellow and a six yellow. So that's kind of sad that that's gone, actually. Uh, sorry, what's happening here? Just reading Force Bull. Were we playing it wrong? It says, or, not and. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was playing it wrong. Oh, it's not an and. Yeah, sorry. It's gain a yellow or a pink. Oh, I cheated heavily. 
Whoops. Okay. Well, we'll try to do that correctly going forward. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're cheaters. I cheated. For sure. Yeah, I definitely would have taken more damage probably and stuff. Yeah. But I think we'd still be okay. But, yeah, I definitely a few times on a few fights where that helped me pull it out. Sometimes I didn't use it, though. So, move the checks. Oh, all these checks? Yep. Void last game. I need to uh, start a whole new sheet. No, we'll just leave it. Uh, okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else for setup? No encounter bonus. No discarding cards. You need to put on the hat of shame. Oh, no, 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 no. No hats of shame here, Vinyl. Everyone makes mistake at every playthrough they do of every game. Even though you think you don't, you do. Everyone does. <laughs> and I'm okay. I understand that. I'll make mistakes. It's fine. It's fine. The only time I don't like mistakes and I think it's very bad is when they're in, like, how to play videos. Uh, turn boss card over. Oh, yes. Thank you. Boss fight card. Yeah, I don't have the digital version of this game. But for those who are curious, there is a digital app of this game that you can play. Uh, which obviously would take less setup. I'm assuming it's on portable devices. So it's even more portable uh, on like your phone or your tablet than carrying the box around. Um, but if you don't want to be staring at your screen, this is like pretty small. Eh, it's pretty cool. And uh, in the app, do they have the expansion too? Is that a thing? Is that already in there? Android with all add-ons. Yeah, I got to look into the app, but uh, yeah, if it has extra stuff, that's cool. Okay. Uh, let's go here. Um, we're going to discard two cards. One, two to start our turn. Let's fill up our dungeon. Let's go like this. Get up there. That all fit. That all fits. Oh, this guy can go up here more. Yes, they have the expansions. Oh, that's cool. The app has expansions and even an Aeons and Mage crossover. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Huh. Okay. Uh, let's go... Uh, spend two more time. And let's pick this one. Oh, Wraith again. Ooh, I don't have any items though. But he is probably not what I want to be fighting right now. I mean, it's not the worst damage, but... If I do fight it, it'll be more cards pitched. That's the thing. I do love that dexterity ability, though. That was very good. Yeah, no card loss now, which is pretty, pretty, pretty much why I want to take them on. Yeah, let's 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 fight them. Whatever. Let's let's do it. So no encounter bonus. Like we're gonna take some hits. We're gonna lose a bunch of cards for time, but feels weird not taking as many dice. So this encounter doesn't have three, no consequences with three time. So we don't have to add hearts to them, right? Or is it any time that we hit for every three? Does anyone know how this works for sure? If an encounter's consequences include three time, add 
one damage to them. Like add one damage. I'm assuming it doesn't add up like stuff from different cards. Do we have any examples in here? Like this would make sense. Like does it just add one heart to this one because it has three in the same box? Or if I left these three open, would it also add one heart because I've taken three? That's, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes, yes, what? <laughs> yes, what? Yes, which one? Let me uh, check here. Yeti, one deck, dungeon. Oh, of course. So it works that uh, version 1.5. And then the designer here says it's number four. If the total consequences of encounter after applying prevention skills include three time, add one damage to the consequences. So at the end of the encounter, add up all the time spent as consequences to unfilled boxes if three or more take one damage see that that's not how i feel it's written but that's how i thought it, it should work like that seems more balanced but end of fight yeah total it up yeah okay that makes more sense yeah because there's not many things that have like the three time in a box okay so we're definitely going to get hit with the three time here so <laughs> i don't feel we're going to cover it all up but let's try yeah, that's <laughs> so we can use a yellow as a pink, but we don't need pinks. Uh, all right. Can we even cover the nine in blue? No, not that I see. Mm hmm. And the blues are all ones, so. We could spend them to get a three yellow and a three or a three pink or a three pink. But that's not enough to combine for anything. So I think we're just going to take it like all in the chin here, right? Because we're not allowed to like cover anything. Like I don't even have a yellow five. <laughs> yep, there's our luck coming to us right there. All right, whatever. We'll just take it all. It's all good. I'm not going to sit here and dwell too long. All right, so we definitely get the extra damage because of the um, three. So we add a heart. It's four hearts total, but because for every two hearts we prevent one, we only take two total damage. Uh, card pitches, though, is one, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. So it's like we're playing the dragon dungeon there. All right. Great. That was a, a wraith I should have definitely ran from, but who knew it would be that bad of a roll. So I do like that ability of dexterity. I feel like I just want to take that because changing, it worked out good last time. Changing a pink to a six seems powerful. So let's just throw that on the bottom. Yeah, even converting to a heroic dice, it's not even going to be close. <laughs> One and two. Let's go here. Okay, there's a four, so we get a heroic die. It's the frost, uh, the ice elemental. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we should have a potion. Forgot about that. It's part of setup. Yeah, I think we flee here. I think we flee. Yeah, we'll flee. Uh, so two more. And we'll flip this one. Oop. Oh, another four. 
Another heroic die. Huh. Now, there's no shields involved in this guy. And this is the change all your dice to fours. I feel like that was so good last time. I feel like I just try to grab it. But let's think about the damage that could be dealt. We take one right away from the flames. Like, I know we won't cover much on this guy. We could roll these two heroic dice too. But like that ability, yum, 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 yum. I want it. <laughs> but we could take extra damage from the time we don't cover. So let's say worst case scenario, one from starting it with flames. Uh, another, that will go through automatically. And then the rest of the dice, uh, rest of the damage. So we get a damage from freezing winds, worst case. And then four more from the card. So that is two, three, four more damage. Uh, that's more than we can take, we would die. So we would have to spend a potion. And if we took that four damage, that would put us one under dying. That's like way too many hits this early. I can convert yellows to pinks though, or, or one yellow. I can use one yellow as a pink. And I can convert one pink to a six, so I should be able to cover at least a damage off that. Yeah, total of four. I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'll use these heroics. Let's try to fight this guy. So take one damage right off the fight, right off the bat. So that comes in right from the ability. Now we're going to roll three yellows, a pink, and three blues. It's a little crazy. Hopefully our rolls aren't as trash as last time. Nope, not as trash. All right. Kate Brown, thank you for subscribing. All right. Let's... Oh, that's a lot of blues. I like that. All right. How are we doing this? Just trying to think of my abilities. I'm trying to, like, forget the abilities I just had because it's like I got to go back to basics here. But um, let's just start covering stuff. Uh, so this pink, we can make a six. Okay, so we used that ability. Uh, we can use a yellow. Oh yeah, we can use a yellow as a pink, right? Uh, so we could just use this yellow to cover that pink box. Uh, how are we gonna do this blue? 11 here, this here, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna use the force bolt thing, I don't think, I could, mm -hmm. yeah, there's probably some way with force bolt, but what I'll do is convert Yeah, I'll just convert these two to a one black. Oh no, that doesn't work either. What am I doing? Yeah, I think we just take the two time loss. Yeah, there's probably a better way. Yeah, because I can't make a blue. That's fine. Let's just take two time loss. Better than taking damage. That's sweet. We took only one damage. Uh, so we're definitely putting this ability on the bottom here because that was awesome sauce. Okay, sweet. Yeah, what am I doing? I'm trying to be a little organized, but it's not working. Okay, um, start of turn, glug, glug, glug. We'll drink the potion, heal up three, gone. Two time, and get more dice. Let's see what's behind here. A pit of spikes. I already have dexterity, but like I, I, I want this. I want that. So let's go. Yeah, vinyl. Uh, so skills. I'm allowed to have up to two skills. 
And if you see here on the card, uh, starting and basic skills do not count towards this limit. Uh, so my armor that's built in is a starting skill, does not count. And force bolt is a basic uh, given to me by the campaign, so that doesn't count. So I'm allowed to have two skills in which I do. So just to be clear there. All right. But I can take one item, which I don't have yet, so I want to take an item. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna attempt this one, and we need to do a four over here to, to even before we put stuff on here. Let's attempt to climb around. One, two, three. Okay, we're gonna roll three yellows. That's it. We probably won't get this one, but we'd only take one damage, so I'm okay with that. And the time, oh no, we do the three times, so it'd be two damage total. But let's see, maybe we can cover up that so we prevent the time. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong guy. I thought I had a yellow. Uh, okay, so that's a crappy roll, two, two, and a three. So I didn't even get a four to cover that. Hmm. Okay, so we're taking two damage. Because uh, it would be three time we're taking total. Uh, so that converts to one damage plus two from the card, but for every two I prevent one and then we got to lose three time one two three so that was uh, I should have I should have ran from that one But uh, that's okay Roll a black no why would I roll a black? Yeah, I, I don't have the black yet from the level if that's what you mean Yeah I could have taken that as a level up so that I would get the black right now, but I'll just take it as a yellow for now. Uh, okay. Let's do two more time. And then we'll fill our dungeon. Two more time. And we'll pick this one. Flame statues. I will just flee. I'll flee on that one, I think. Well, it's got backstab, though. I like backstab. Can I do it? Uh, I would have to do the blue, which I only roll three. I don't think I'll get eight, and, and I got to hit a four there. Like, And it already has three time, four time, so I would probably take a damage if I don't cover that eight. Yeah, I'm going to flee. One, two. Okay, it revealed a four, so we get a heroic die. Force wall. Oh, that's cool. I can prevent time loss, which would be helpful actually for the Yeti playthrough. Um, where this freezing winds crap. But I would take a lot of hits here. Although I could use this black here. Uh, this is tough. Mm. Nope, I'll fleet. One, two. Another four. Wow. I'm getting blocked here. So this guy, let's see what this guy does. Another ether roll. Immediately discard all rolled ones and threes. Oh, this guy's rough too. Hmm. You know what though? Damage wise, we could take one from freezing winds and six from here, so that's three. So four total, which would kill us. I don't have a potion. I don't have a potion. So, yeah. Ah, this is rough. Yeah. How do we do this?
I say we risk it. Let's do it. Let's go Phantom. Let's do it. Whatever. Uh, one pink. Oh, four yellow. Four yellow. Yeah, that's the problem is all the pinks on here. But I'll use the two heroic dice I have. Let's try. Okay. Uh, let's see. I mean, we might be able to prevent the damage from the uh, the time. So we have a. Do I need to roll any dice? No, no dice get rolled. So let's change. Mm, do I change? I'd have to spend a pink. I probably don't change all the dice to fours. I might be okay. Uh, so let's see. We have a four yellow. And this pink. But we could do that. Could spend a black. Yeah, let's spend this black. To become a six pink. Let's spend this six blue to become a six yellow. Oh wait, I can use a yellow as a pink also. Six yellow. So I can use this yellow as a pink because of my <coughs> campaign ability. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, one sec. We'll just do the one time loss. Although I could do, yeah, we'll just do the one time loss. It's fine. I could have done things where I changed a couple to fours and, but it's okay. One time loss. All right. So the ability here, well, oh, that's, oh, that's so good, but we'll just take it as a, uh, a skill and then we'll toss this one here or we'll take it as an item sorry an item okay uh, and then we're gonna level up it's gonna give us a black die going forward an extra potion token All the dice, all the dice. Okay, now we can hold more items and one more skill. Two more items and one more skill. All right. One, two. We have more agility. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for some of these. I don't know, this force wall. Got two pinks. Let's 
Three blues. I don't know. These are all rough. I don't know. This one might be the kind of best one, best chance to dodge them. Two pink die, though. I do get a black now, though. Let's just go disenchant. Let's try that. Uh, so we're going to toss three cards. So we see the stairs. We're going to do this. Uh, we'll go for this guy. And then one here. Oh, I did not lose the ones and threes. Did I forget that? Oh, yes, I did. Oh, crap. Should I just redo that one? Yeah, I'll redo it. That's kind of uh, bad that I missed that. Let's just redo it. So we can we can go back. We can go back. Yeah, that's that's a bad one. So let's just put two cards back here, which we'll pitch in a minute. Uh, so we shouldn't have leveled up yet, right? And then what did I? I would have been like this and like this, right? Did I only have two damage? Yeah, I only lost the time. So I should have, should be one more card there. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do it properly. Sorry. I should have taken way more beatings than that. Thank you. But yeah. Okay, so no black there. I had two heroic dice, right, though? Did I have that? Yeah, I think so, because I, I read all the fours. So let's do four yellow, one pink. Three blue. Right? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's just redo the phantom. So we got to discard immediately all of our ones and threes rolled, which I totally missed. And of course, it's going to hit me hard. Yeah, so it's going to be way worse. That's fine. That's how it should be, though. Uh, okay. So I have no pinks. And I have no blacks. All gone. All right. So can we even damage this guy at all? We can trade in, right? We can do four yellow here. Let's trade in uh, these for a four. We can stop two damage here. We can blue three discarded. Oh, thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, perfect. Uh, so then we'll trade in. This one can go here. Let's trade these in for a pink, uh, or a black five, sorry, which we'll put up here. All right, so the damage we're taking, one, two, three, four from there because we're taking time of one, two, three. So let's do the time. One, two, three. Okay, we take a damage because of the time and then three more here. So it's only going to be two. So we're one away from dying. So that's how that should have went. Something like that. Right, we got all that. So then we'll do the same thing. We'll toss those, level up. This will slide under here. Now we're not, we're two away from dying. We get the potion, which shouldn't be there right now, but it's back. All right. Yeah, that ethereal guy is rough. Uh, okay. Now it's different. That's different. Okay. So, uh, start of the round. Let's do a potion and get rid of three of these. Beautiful, beautiful. That's better. That's better. Put a yellow five on the pink shield. And hey, Bernardo, greetings from Wally World. Looking for Clark and his amazing Vista Cruiser. <laughs> oh, good movie. Okay, so now... I feel like we don't fight any of these. Let's just dive in the dungeon. Uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> Molly World is closed due to Corona, yes. <laughs> uh, I debate just doing the two time on here to just take advantage of something here. But I feel like that's like a bad play because I'll definitely take more time, which will cause damage off the stairs. Will cause damage off here, most likely. I am no good at perils. This, ugh, not even rolling enough dice for any of this stuff. Yeah, we'll just dive. So let's see how bad the second floor gets. All right, so with perils, we need to cover up even more stuff here. Uh, so we need, oh, it's uh, sorry, it's uh, damage, not a shield. So it's still just one shield. And it looks like we'll take some more damage in combats, probably. Ooh, spicy. The cool part is if you take on some four level guys early and yes, you do get damage from them, they go under your card or if you use them for leveling up, they leave the game. So you don't have to worry about them on a future floor, which is kind of neat. Uh, so if you kind of don't see a lot of low level guys early, it sucks for your playthrough because it's nice to hit those low level guys early, but it just means you have better odds of seeing them later when you're like OP. So it's like you can crush them. So it kind of balances out a little, but then again, they come later and they have all this extra requirements here. So it, it still makes them a little harder, but again, a level four would be worse. So yeah, but there's still lots of level fours in here, as we just saw. Oops. Uh, okay, start uh, discarding. One, two, let's fill up our floor. Lots of doors. One, two, this one. A spiked log. Hmm. More agility. Hmm. Only roll three yellow dice. I don't know. This is crazy. Oh, I do have the encounter bonus actually. Yeah, let's try it. Let's roll a black, three yellows. We're trying to dodge it. We got to do two time. Okay. I'm going to cover two of these things, which is going to be a problem, but hopefully we don't have three time hitting us here. Okay. Mm. So we need a four. Uh, hmm. I mean, I guess it just makes sense to do this. And take one damage and one time. All right. So the ability on the spike log gain. So for four blue, so any mix of four dice uh, or pips on blue dice, I can exchange to gain a four yellow, a four pink, then increase one of any of my dice by one. Hmm. And in combat, static burst. Nah, we'll just take it as a, another agility die. I think is the way to go there. Can take one more item, one more skill. All right. Did I take the damage? Did I get damage? I don't know if I forgot to take damage. Did I forget to take damage? Uh, I 
Entry Disney, the glitch person will go better. Uh, use it for level. Mm, true. Could use it for leveling up. Yeah, I don't know if I forgot to take a damage. I'm not sure. If I didn't, I don't know. I'm sure you guys would have said. Okay. One, two. All right, let's pick here. Ice Elemental, that gives us a heroic die. Frost Guy, before the encounter. Well, that's a cool ability. So reroll one of your dice or increase one of your dice by one. Lucky Familiar. And that can be used in perils. Hmm. I don't know about dice rerolling. I think. I think I'm going to just fight this guy, I think. I would get two. I could use these two black dice. I only have three yellows, and I need to get 11 in yellow. And then I need like a five yellow over here to prevent damage. Then a whole bunch of blues. I don't think I'm ready for this guy. Uh, big 11 on three strength. Big 11 on three strength. You only had one damage before the log encounter. Okay, that makes sense. Perfect. Okay, I thought so. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything and, and cheat too much. <laughs> Although all my pinks can be used down here. I'm going to try this. This could be, could be a, a bad play, but I'm going to risk it. Take both these. Uh, let's take our three pinks, which hopefully will get us good stuff off these abilities down here. Three blues, three yellows. Oh, I got to spend three time from Frost. One, two, three. All right, let's fight him. Okay. All right, let's uh, use some pink to change a bunch of dice to fours. It seems like it seems very useful right here, but uh, I don't know if it uh, is enough. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad roll. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let's see what else can we do here. Uh, we can turn a pink into a six pink. Although that doesn't really do anything unless we combine, right? Let's turn. I want to use Force Bolt. Maybe I just turn that into a yellow. I need a yellow five. I need a yellow five. No, I don't. Yes, I do. This blue six is also powerful. Yeah, let's do this. Let's gain a yellow six. All right. Uh, so. Um, So we could put a yellows here of 12 to cover that 11. Then we can use this yellow over here to block two damage. Then we can put this one here to block four damage. And this one to block four time, or at time on four. Uh, let's combine these to make a black four. Let's just cover this. And we'll cover this. So, if I did that right, you should have made your pinks 
into black. Oh, okay. Oh, I see, yeah. Well, I think I just did that, though. Uh, all right, so I have two damage, but it only is one because of my ability. And then two time, which is not three for that extra damage because of freezing wind, so we're okay. And I did it, yes, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, done, done, done. Okay. I don't know what to do with this guy. Is that ability worth it? Like, could it help me in some of the perils? Maybe. Reroll one of your dice or increase one of your dice by one. I feel like I want that ability, but also the extra health and another agility die could be helpful in perils too. But this also works in combat. I'm going to try this ability actually. Yeah, I'm going to try the ability. Let's see how it works out. Use it as an item. It probably should use it as an item. But I want to try that. I'm going to try something different. I just want to experience it. So I'm going to pick it for that purpose. But uh, yeah. One. Two. Let's check this door. Arrow wall. Speaking of perils. Let's do it. We're going to try to rush through. We can't take dodge because we're not, it doesn't work with our, our skill. We're not allowed to prevent damage with it. So if we took this, it would be for the experience or the item. But I'm okay with that. Let's do it. So let's try. Let's try to rush through. So we get a black for the encounter bonus, and three pink. And we have. Uh, we just have a way to reroll or increase the die by one. Give me high rolls. Okay, so we got a four over here. Uh, we could reroll this die. We have 11 right here. Let's reroll this one. Maybe we get what we need. I don't know. Oh, mama, we got a six. We're good. All right, so already this lucky familiar is lucky. All right, so we're good. <laughs> Uh, so we'll just take this as an item so we can get more yellow dice. We can have up to three items. <laughs> I told you to go after Frank T. Yeti. His friends are protecting him. Yeah, I do feel like I see a lot of perils. Yesterday's playthrough I did, I just kept taking skill stuff, and I felt like I got more lucky. I didn't see that many perils, but today, yes, we're seeing lots of perils, it feels, but... Uh, we gotta deal with them. That's why. That's why I want to take that ability to have something that can help us there. Another peril. Pit of spikes. Let's try it again. Let's try to jump over. Although, yeah, let's try to jump over. It's fine. All right, a black, three pinks. Can we get us lucky? Oh, it's got armor crush on it. I love that one. Hmm. But I can't take it. I would have to throw away one. So we just don't take it, I guess. Maybe we find it somewhere else. I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, hmm. So five, two fives. And then let's re-roll this one. Three. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so let's put this up here. And what do we need? A 14, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, so we're taking a damage and losing the time. Uh, we're two away from dying, though. Mm, a little rough. Okay. Do I want Armor Crush instead? How much experience is the reroll? Yeah, let's let's take Armor Crush. We're gonna take Armor Crush. I like that ability. And then we'll pitch this one to become experience of four. Which gets us halfway to leveling up. Drop the bottom skill 
and put it as an item as it has extra life. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, I probably should have done that. All right, that's okay. Uh, all right, so it's experience now. Uh, two more. Let's fill the dungeon with more perils. <laughs> two more. Let's go to this one. Another peril. It's a four though. Let's get a heroic die. Ooh, we could roll a black. But it's also four to level up. Let's take this to try to just level straight up. Yeah, even though it has the two on here, I think we just do it for a quick level up. Which will get us to level three, give us another potion so we can heal up. I just have to be careful here though. Uh, and try to take as little damage as possible. This is risky. This is risky stuff. Oh yeah, because I don't have the reroll anymore. Ah, that was bad play. Should have kept the reroll. I could flee. I could flee. Probably should. But it is the four experience. This feels like if I do this without dying, it gets me the level up and gets me the additional potion. But the problem is, if I even do the top one, it's blue 11, and it's got three damage right there. I reduce it down to only two. And if I take this damage, I still take two. And I only roll three blues. But I could roll a black for this, a black for my encounter bonus. So that could help. The problem is this box right here. Getting the five or higher on that too. Hmm. Pass, yeah. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll do the slow time if I do it. Uh, but it could be my death. If I take two damage, I'm done. And there's a potential here to take two damage. Like, I'd have to fully get 11 on blue, three blue dice. And I guess I have two blacks to help, but I also need a four over here to even be able to put anything on there. Yeah, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Oh, so bad. Yeah, I'll say no. All right, two more. One, two. Let's look here. Oh, a little cute rat. So uh, the pink here is uh, eight for having one door, two doors. So I have to get eight pink put on there to even start putting stuff on the other part. Uh, there is ways of getting damage here, but... I feel like I could take this guy, no problem. But it's this stuff over here I'm a little worried about. I don't know, let's try. If we can't take a rat, yeah, paying time will hurt too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So let's just take this rat. Let's try to take him on. Uh, so I'll use this die. Let's see what we got. We got four yellows. We got three pink. And three blue. Is that enough? Should I use this heroic one? I don't want to. I don't want to. Just do the slow time. Will cost you a hit three, two, three, five. All right, let's get this done here. Okay. Uh, so we need to get eight in pink. So technically we have that, but we have this whole yellow thing where we can gain a black six that we can only use on shields. Okay, with our armor crush. Uh, let's turn this pink to a pink six. Uh, I like this yellow six. I mean, we could change all dices to fours, but do we need to? Do we need to? Those could go there. Uh, we do have the five for here. 
we have yeah or we could change could change this with force bolt to get us what are we looking for a yellow five yeah a yellow five I'm okay taking one time that's not a big deal Oh yeah, if I do the change all the dice to fours thing, let's just do that. Yeah, let's do that. What is up there? That's eight. Okay, so we'll use a pink to change these to fours. Sure. Should have done that earlier. That's okay. This is also a four. So, sure. Uh, this goes over here actually, sorry. And then, uh, oh, does that not do it? Yeah, I maybe messed that up. That's okay. I need to put two more pink. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't. I can't work it out anyway. It's it's all good. I'll just take one time. I don't know what I was trying to do there. I probably messed something up. All right, let's just get rid of one time. How's this rat working out for us? You could spend a two blue to make it a five blue on perils also hmm. we already maxed out on skills i don't really want to place any of those skills we're already maxed out on items i don't feel like that should replace any so let's just throw it here as experience we're at six two more time uh let's go here a cave-in oh no This is the two experience I need to level up. What's the safest way? Safest way would be to dismantle it. So let's dismantle it. Oh, you know what I forgot? I can use yellow as this pink. Force bolt to yellow. I mean, eight agility. Yeah, I, I forgot I could also have used a yellow as a pink, which probably I should have just done there and I would have not lost that time. Yeah, because I had two yellows, I think, at the end that were fours. And I had a three yellow, and then I just need, like, two for pink. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot about this ability. forgot about that guile. So I should have one more time back. Yeah, I think so. I think I could have done that. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Uh, so now... are if I dismantle I can toss two no damage happens I think it's a safer play yeah let's do it let's dismantle it we'll toss the two we're gonna roll four yellows <clears throat> and one black for an encounter bonus I need to prevent, so if I don't cover the yellow, I take a damage for having three, three time at least. If I take too much time, I'll, if I take at least three time, I'll get damage on here also. I also could take damage if I don't get a five or higher. I think I'm gonna roll this black in there also. Yeah, I need to make cards for the campaign abilities. Yeah, to go on the bottom here, that, that should be the way it is. That, I would be surprised if that doesn't already exist on Board Game Geek in a file section. <laughs> or is there a way I can just pull this sheet off and kind of slide it under? Hmm. Or just cut cut it out and glue it on? <laughs> but I know you can choose different each time. There's got yeah, there's gotta be a way to do it. Just glue them on, on a card or something. Alright. Give me high numbers. All right, there's a cocked one here. Let's roll that over here. There we go. All right. I see ones. I see lots of dirty, filthy ones. But I think it's okay, though. 
That's four, five, four, five, six. Beep, beep. Lay it next to my character. Yeah, I probably should do that. <laughs> Not keep it off screen. Yeah, that's probably a good 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 call there, Jim. <laughs> Not keep it totally out of out of my eye line. Yeah, sure. Or my line of sight or whatever. Okay. Really, next to your level. Yeah, true. Yeah, because I never really stick potions on the bottom here. I probably should uh, to get another potion going. I don't know how many I've thrown away, but... Uh, okay, so this will become a level up. We'll get rid of this. We gain an additional potion. Uh, we still just have one counter bonus. We need 10 more to level up. So let's throw this die over here. Uh, we're going to delve, I guess. Uh, start of turn, actually. Let's spend this and just get rid of three hearts. Yeah. How do we do this? Potions. I see now why earlier, was it Dragon said, goes healing all the time? Because, yeah, even as a paladin, I'm taking hits. I don't have as many hearts as last time uh, from my items, but I can see the risk though, because sometimes you just want to, you got to be aggressive if you want to level up fast, and you got to take on those fours when you see them, and not just keep running away and fleeing, because you just lose more cards and waste more time, and don't get as much done. But if you had healing stuff, like an extra potion, that's like, that could buy you that extra level four you could just run into head first and then heal it up after. Use a potion, heal one damage. Oh, so first aid give you extra healing hearts on a potion. Recovery, when you descend, heal one damage. Yeah, I see why that just like makes more sense because that like always will usually come into play if you play aggressive. That makes sense. I thought with the paladin, maybe that's not as good, but I can see now why even with the paladin, that would be good. Uh, I stomped the first game probably because I was playing a level one boss. That's probably part of it, but yeah. <laughs> I was in trouble. It's all good, though. All right, so we're going to delve. Uh, so let's get rid of this stuff. What was it, a goblin hiding under there? So we're going deeper into the biting cold, which says all uh, yellow boxes gain the shield. So I got to cover up everything yellow. And look at this. Look at this junk. <laughs> I am so in trouble. I should have really looked at this card closer. I should definitely have valued yellows. Not throwing away his experience, but that's okay. Now I can hold more items. Hopefully get some cheap and easy yellows at the start. Some little goblins or something to help us. But yeah, I don't think we'll make it to the boss, but we still get some check marks. And that's what I like the campaign mode for. As I can practice against the boss for the first time, like now. Still get some experience points out of it. Learn what works against this this run and what doesn't with these yeti's cavern abilities over here and if we can make it to the boss we can even see how the boss kind of works out but i don't know if i'll get through this third floor but but yeah it's making me think we spend our check marks on healing but again we can put them on yellow so we could like add them to durability and try to get an extra health and that will always work even if we keep playing combat and keep choosing the combat line here. Crafty, that's cool. Extra extra one skill or item. Yeah, maybe we just work on basic and fill up basic first because it just it always applies like in every future playthrough. And then start getting fancy with it after that. But yeah, I'm regretting not taking the dungeon stuff to help with the uh, with the uh, Perils, that seems like perils in this playthrough is like, or taking, keeping that skill, the reroll, that could be, it could have been huge. Hey, John B, how's it going? Long time no see. Uh, I guess not that long, but hey, how's it going? All right. Floor three. One, two. Fill it up. One, two three and four okay one two 
let's go here. A locked door apparel. Ah, oh, yellow sword. That's what I want. But I now have to fill up this yellow if I go that route. Because all those boxes gain that shield. Or I just try to pick the lock with agility, which probably is the right way to go. But I don't roll as many dice. I'm going to try it though. I'm going to try. Let's bash it open. There's less time on here and less hearts. And I roll more dice. It's probably one I should just run from though. But. Uh, just looking here though. So. What do I take if I can't? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I should even do this. I feel like I should run, actually. I don't think it's worth the damage, the time. Damage and time. I am the paladin and all, but it just feels dumb. I have no abilities to help me. Yep, we're going to run. One, two. Let's try this one. Plague Rat. Yeah, I'll take the Plague Rat on. That's fine. Uh, encounter is combat so three blues three pinks four yellows and a black all right um mm -hmm. okay let's figure out our abilities here Blues. I have a four blue. So I need to cover up all the yellows. Let's figure this out. So let's take these yellows out. Um, so this yellow. Should this be a yellow? This could be a pink. Let's take this yellow and turn it into a black six, which can go on anything with a shield. And that is any yellow, technically. So let's just put it on this one. The doors open are two, so we got to cover up this one with pink of eight. So we could go like that. But we can also convert this pink. Let's convert this pink into a pink six. Let's convert this pink, or change, sorry, change this pink to make all dice fours that I want. Where are you? Maybe that was dumb, I don't know. Okay. Let's see here. I don't know. The blue. Now, we could cover up these blues and then we can trade this blue in. I don't know for a yellow. I think a yellow five. Let's see. If we cover up this pink here, this pink here. Let's see. We got a yellow here. These yellows are covered. So that answers the question to be a pink five. And all we take is a time. Nope, that time has to be covered. Ah, yellow time crap. Um, those all have to be covered. So what did I take? A pink? So we'll make it a yellow five. Uh, what do we want? Two time or damage? No, let's take it as time. Two time. All right. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, throw that under as an item, I think. Actually, 
That might be good actually for the perils. How many can we keep? Four? So yeah, we can take one more. Let's take that as an ability. Help us on our peril problem a little bit. A little bit on the perils. And it can still work in combat. But it's not the greatest ability. All right. Two, one, two. This one. A shadow. Spend time for each skill you use. Man, this Yeti third floor is crazy. Um, but at least the yellows aren't out of control on this guy. Pink. Yeah, let's take them on. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to take them on. Uh, four yellows. Four yellows. Three blues. I don't think it's a good idea, but uh, we'll see. Has to be yellow, yeah. Only good on strength perils. Oh yeah, true. But still, I seem to be able to choose that. Like right here, I could choose it here, which is good. So it's like I see one, I can get help get more strength for the boss and stuff. So I wanna get this at some point. So let's go after this guy. Oh boy, okay. Pink six, probably should use these. Okay, uh, so we dexterity. Let's change nothing with, oh, we do have a reroll. So let's do, just get rid of these two dice to roll a yellow and a black before we change dice to fours. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. Let's take take a yellow, turn it to a black six, which we can put on anything with a shield. Probably need to put it there. Is it 10? Maybe not. All right, let's take this pink, change dices to fours. Oh, I need to be, I'll spend all the time in a second. Uh, I'll get that. I'm probably being shouted at. I'm sorry. Let's fix it. All right, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. Yeah, this guy is so not worth it. Should not have went here. This is a bad, bad choice. Bad choice. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even check to see that. If I could avoid using some of these skills, but I feel like that roll was so horrible. So I'll throw that there because that has a shield. Throw these there on the pink. Let's throw this here. Uh, this here. This here. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Let's do this. Cover those up. 
cover this up, cover this up. We covered up all the yellows, we covered up all the shields. Uh, so we take one damage. We take another time. Oh yeah, if it was the ethereal guy with the ones and threes discarded, that would have been disgusting. I probably would have ran from that guy though. Alright, so let's take this as an agility die. Okay, uh, two time. I'm going to go for this. Uh, we will go for the bash it open. One encounter die. Four yellows. Four yellows. Four yellows. Sorry, my dice tray is sliding. Four yellows. I feel like this could not be worth the navy. Maybe I go for, oh no, because I can roll a black. Let's try this, we'll try this persistence. I don't know if this is the right play, but I'm trying to bash it open. Mm -hmm. So this is a shield spot. <laughs> these two are shield spots. Uh, so we can spend two of these cruddy ones to re-roll a black and a yellow. I don't know if that was smart. Probably not. Uh, well, we got a six there, but only a one here. Hmm. Okay. So we can throw 11 on this. And a four here and a four here. And we're good. We just take a damage, which is bad. Three out of six and a time. Okay. Uh, we can take up to five items. So let's take that item. Two more time. Let's look here. A little goblin. Okay, there's only four because the doors aren't open. We're going to take this guy. Uh, I mean, he's not the greatest, but. So five yellows. Five yellows and three blue still. All right, we're low on blue this time. And four agility. Five dice is minimum to do. I'm back to the win yet? No. I'm going to fight this big bad goblin though. This one again. Two. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so we need to cover some yellows. All right. Let's take this one and turn it into a black six that we can put on shield spaces only. So I guess we'll cover this one. Done. Um, so let's take this yellow and this yellow. We're going to roll a yellow and a black. Oh, that's so bad. A one and a two. <laughs> so bad. I got worse, except for it's black, so it can be used for other things. Although everything else is a single spot. So let's turn... 
Yeah, we're going to use this for one of these abilities. Oh, yeah, let's change everything to fours first. Yeah, yeah. Four, four. These are fours. Uh, those are all good. Okay. So we have a five here. We want to cover this damage, but we need to cover the other yellows. All the yellows, actually. This is going to be a problem. This is the problem. So we are actually going to put a four on this spot. Put that one there. Put this one here. Oh, we forgot we can gain a pink six. That might help us convert. Oh, also we can get a yellow by using a blue. Yeah, let's just convert this to a blue yellow. I mean a blue to a yellow four. Okay, so let's cover that. Let's cover this. Um, yeah, I think we have enough dice to do it. Let's just, yeah, let's just throw those there. Let's throw these there. And yeah, oh yeah, we have black. What am I doing? Yeah, we we enough. Well, tons of dice. We're good. Yeah, we're good. We got this guy. Like, why was I worried? I don't know. But it's just these all these boxes up here, and now having to cover yellows as shields all the time. That's uh yeah, that's crazy. Like I can't just ignore stuff for fun. Be like, yeah, yeah, I'll take the time. It's like, nope, I need to cover that before I can even cover everything. So, uh, Yeti, what do you want more of? Seems like yellows are more of a thing. So let's replace uh, one of these pinks. We'll just replace a pink. So let's do. Let's do it like that. I have a feeling my health is like too low, and that's what's going to kill me. Uh, this will go as experience of three. Uh, Rob, where did you get your health markers from? Uh, in the box. Uh, in the box. These uh, come in version 1.8. So right here. Uh, version 1.8, that's what came in my box. And I know they've been changing components as it goes, so that's just the version I have. All right, be right back. back okay um end of turn right okay well it's uh two time reveal dungeon or explore i guess explore all right flip two well, i think we have one left on there 
Uh, let's go with this one. Um, Beetle. If any armor boxes are empty, discard this card. Uh, discard this instead of looting. Don't think we can level up before the dragon. But we can. No. No. Be nice to get a potion, though. <clears throat> Uh, let's just go at this guy. Look at this five. But like, yeah, I don't think even with another turn, we could put one on there. Hmm. Yeah, let's try him. <clears throat> okay. So encounter die. Three pink, uh, six yellows, and three blue. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Um, uh -huh. Turn this yellow into a black six, and we'll use it to cover this six, which is also a shield spot. Okay, because of bite, biting, biting cold, biting cold, yeah. All right. Um, this black one is useless. So let's change it to a pink six. Uh, we got three yellows, a yellow five, yellow four, okay, yellow three even. Uh, we want to change a few dice to fours, but is it worth tossing a pink four? Maybe. We have more than enough pinks. Uh, did I use that? Yeah, I used that ability already. Oh no, I put it on the wrong one. It should be on this one. Okay, uh, blue. Yeah, let's just change the dice to fours. Four, 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 four. Probably should have rolled those other two first, but that's okay. That's still good. This is a four. So if I just start covering pink stuff and yellow stuff, which needs to be covered, and hopefully this guy doesn't escape. Oops, that's a four. What's back there? I need a yellow five. Oh, I need a yellow five. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is put that there. We'll take a yellow five. Pink there. And then we'll convert these two yellows into a black, yellow. And that will cover me on the blue. Booyah! All right, so he doesn't escape. And we'll throw them down here for experience. Now we're at five, although, how many skills am I allowed? Four? Uh, I already have four. Do I want to replace anything? No. No. But it is blue. It's not that important. It's all about the yellow. It's all about the yellow. To level up, we'd have to get 
two more enemies at total five. But it's not I don't know if that's worth a damage risk. But I need to heal. That's the other thing. I want to heal. Uh, I don't know what to do. This is rough. It's like this is a harder dungeon or something. <laughs> it's like it it's like it's not easy mode. Yeah, this is cool. It's definitely cool. All right. Let's discard. We'll take another turn. I could delve right now because I revealed it at the start of a turn. But... Maybe I get another potion and I can put it on the bottom, right? Because every time I slide a potion under, which I never seem to remember to do or never see the option or I throw them away or something. I don't know what I do with them, but... Oh, well, there's one, two, probably it, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it seems like uh, they all go from time. <laughs> uh, they all leave from time. Because there's none here. There's probably one or two in there, maybe. All right, let's see. Leave Frank in peace, not pieces. Uh, let's go here. A dirty old wraith. Yeah, I think I got to flee on this one. He is three, but before the encounter, I got to convert an item to XP. Oh, but mm, like I could switch the yellow swords around. Maybe I have a yellow sword in here. They're all worth two. And I just take his yellow sword, and then I still need a level three guy after, or I just take him as experience. I level up, and then I have a black die. Two black dice every round going forward versus yellows. Hmm, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Or if I don't care about agility as much, but I still need a five and a six to block hits, but I mean, I do have a way of doing that with a, if I only have two pinks. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, I can turn a blue into a pink. Or blues in the pinks. And I need a pink to change all... Oh, I could use black, I guess. Mm, I just need to get as much yellow as possible. So maybe I'll take this opportunity to throw away a pink. Becomes XP. I'm at 8. And like even if I don't level up, that's fine. I will just get another sword here onto here. But I do want to level up, though, because that will lead me to a potion so I can clear off some health. Because I think health is what's going to kind of tank me. But do I have enough dice to even deal with this guy? If I flee, that's fine, because I can just run down the stairs after, right? Could level. Yeah, that's true. Black is better than yellow. That is correct. That is correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, why would I even bother? Unless unless my abilities, but I guess the black still works there. So yeah, never mind what I'm I don't know what I'm thinking. Alright, let's try this guy to try to level up. Let's go Hail Mary here. One black for encounter bonus. Six yellow dice. Uh two agility now. And three blue and that heroic ability has been like tanking here in this run i feel i feel like i got it early in the yeti a couple times but then after that i i don't know if i'm just seeing all the fours go as time this time yeah yeah maybe all the fours are just going as time i don't know but i'm not revealing them to get the black heroic dice i need unless i just forgot which is totally possible she's a drain <laughs> that wraith, she's a dream. All right. Oh, I see a bunch of sixes. That feels good. All right. All right. Let's see. Yeah. A potion plus a black die 
is key. That's why I need to level up more importantly. All right. So how are we doing this here? Let's take this one black or one yellow, turn it to a black six that can be put on anywhere we need a shield, which is everything yellow and a, a blue here. So let's throw that there for now. Uh, let's mm, change this pink to a pink six, which I don't see the point in taking. There's nothing I need pink for, but I could just spend, oh, I can turn them both into a black six. Okay, uh, let's do this pink to change. Do I need, uh, let's see what I need here. These are stand sixes, of course. This is a six. Uh, yeah, we'll change all the others to fours. Although I should have rolled first. I always forget to do that ability first. I could have got a black. All right. Should be able to cover most things here. So we need, let's do the blue there. Just start throwing dice out, see what happens. Just one time. One time if I did that right. Yeah. Uh, which just leads to another heart here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Level up. Gone. Take a potion. Boom. And we get two black dice going forward as an encounter bonus. Yeah. All right, that wasn't too shabby. It wasn't too shabby at all. All right, so we made it to the boss, right? That's what's important. Is there any reason? Is there any reason to take more damage? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, hmm. Do I push it? No, no, I don't. All right. End of turn. We're gonna delve. Let's get rid of the stairs. Uh, let's get rid of these. Yeti, coming for you, bro. Uh, start of turn, I guess I'll just use a potion to get rid of three. Okay, here's the Yeti. He is mad, look at this guy. Look at him, he is furious. So, I don't care about all the shields anymore on yellows. I gotta forget that's not a thing. And time, there is no time on here. Don't care about all that. Looks like I dealt with all that in the dungeon. Time doesn't matter on a boss anyway, duh. Uh, six health. All ones rolled are immediately discarded, which could hurt a lot. I need to get 24 on yellows before I can even start hitting other dice. The cool part is, at least it does a damage to him when I do that. So that's kind of neat. But 24, that's... Ah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, this is... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Didn't use black four. Whoops. That's okay. Uh, I messed up, I'm sure. I made lots of inefficient mistakes. Tons of mistakes. It's all good. We rolled back some of our rules mistakes. I'm not worried about inefficiency mistakes, but rules mistakes, uh, yeah. Keep it to a minimum, but they will happen. Okay. Uh, so, we get two black dice. We get six yellow dice. We get two pink dice. And we get three blue dice. Let's try to use our abilities in order. That's the only chance we have, I think. Forgot my parka for this battle. Yeah. I don't know. Is this is this armor warm? I, I don't know. I can't really tell. I mean, it looks thick and warm. I, I don't know. But it is metal, right? It's like... 
Got long johns under there. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. But she doesn't have a hat. She didn't bring her hat or a scarf. I don't know. Not prepared. Holy ones and twos. That sucks. One gone. Two, three, four. All gone. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> Stupid Yeti. All right. Oh, stupid Yeti. Stupid, stupid Yeti. Let's flip over this. We forgot about that. <laughs> That's true. I do like the way the characters in this game aren't wearing bikini mail, like Dragon Saint in the chat. Yeah, they're all they're all like properly dressed, which is nice. They're not all showing like tons of skin and you know. Trying to hooch it up to get all the teenage boys to spend their money on your board game. I think that comes from like the video game world. That's like a huge thing in gaming and video games. Like more polygons in the boobs to sell more copies. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Uh... I don't even know what we're doing. I don't know where to even start. It feels bad, like, having so few dice. But let's play with some abilities and see what we can do with it. Try to mitigate our damage as best we can. And hit him back. So getting to 24 on yellow. We need, like, four sixes. <clears throat> but we can convert... I feel like we toss these to maybe get better results on this. Roll a black and a yellow, like go Hail Mary. But worst worst case, we convert. We've got to lose dice. I don't know. This one's a fair trade, but converting. I mean, we got it. Converting to fours. It's not. Fours aren't enough right now. Like, four blues aren't going to get us there. But I feel like maybe this to get a six black. And this, whoops. Uh, shoot, what was that? Was that a five? Oh, I don't know what that was. Maybe I can see quick. It was a two. It was a two. Right? Yeah, it was a two. Okay, we're back. Okay. Um, we can make that a six pink. That will help with some damage. can combine these blues that aren't helping me into a six yellow. Yeah, it's all about the yellows. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, so let's try this here. If I throw all this in there, that's 24. If I throw that in there, I get another hit on him. Block of health. Holy, I'm going to take three damage here. What can this be used for? 
Nothing. Nothing. Man, those ones. Ah. Blue two to yellow. Yellow to black six. I'll just take it. There might have been a better way to do it, but I'll just take it. So my ability does work on in combat for every two damage. I prevent one. So I'm taking six. So I take three. Hopefully I just don't roll ones. If I didn't roll ones, I'd had four more dice to work with. I could have done extra stuff on here and it would have felt better about it, but I don't have the extra dice. So it hurts like a bunch of my skills. Uh, so, oh, sorry. He gets hit for one, two. Uh, so I'm not going to win if I'm only doing two damage to him a turn and he's doing three to me. Uh, yeah, no potions. Yeah, the healing. I see why the healing. I should have won healing. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Uh, so three blues, two pinks, six yellows. Okay. No ones, no ones, no ones. Two ones. It's better than four ones, I guess. And a lot of other lower dice. Oh my god, look at all the twos though. Only one six? Oh, this is a bad roll too. Oh, this is killing me. Okay, so let's turn a yellow into a black six. I don't know. This is trash. All trash. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we're going to roll these two yellows as a yellow and a black. Uh, two fours. Okay. Doesn't help me really. You have a couple more dice, but I, I mean, these pinks and these blues all being just twos, uh, I can turn one into a six. Uh, yeah, blue fours do jack to me other than make force bolt a little better. Which I might need to do. Yeah, I think that's the only thing I can really do is turn these into two fours. Trade these in for pink six, I guess. I need to keep the damage down. I don't I don't know if I can even do that. Let's see. So you get to twenty four here. So that's twelve. Another 12, so that's blocked. Yeah, I, I can't, even with blocking that, hitting here, and hitting here, I don't think that's still five hearts. Yeah, that's still three damage. I can't, can I get it down to two? I don't think so. Oh, maybe. No. Because even if I just converted this to like... Uh, it's the problem I need fives and sixes. And converting to blacks, putting fours together doesn't really do it. I need to block this one yellow six right here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, uh, I take three damage. And I have six health. Yeah, I didn't get as many health bumps this, this playthrough either. And then he will take one, two, three. So one away on the boss. And I was one shy. 
I don't know, going one more round, maybe, but I doubt it. I, I think I would have died anyway. There's no way I could stop all the damage. Yeah, I think for this guy, I needed to get, like, more items and skills. Or maybe there's better skills I could have taken. Or even a little bit more health. If I could have got, like, two or three more hearts, maybe, that could have been enough to do it, too. Or one more potion. If I just didn't take some other hits earlier, that where I wasted potions. Hmm... Yeah, maybe getting that extra potion ability might be what I need. Paladin is a Yeti Popsicle. Took three damage. <laughs> More dice, yeah. That's the thing. I get. I squeak to level four, but I need to take advantage of having like seven items, like more dice. Because hitting those ones, if, if I didn't hit the ones, maybe I would have had extra dice to change to fours. But even so, the fours don't really help me to turn into cover fives and sixes. So this guy having all the fives and sixes on here, that's the scary part. That's like huge luck roll there. You need like lots of luck. Or just like tons of extra dice to try to get those numbers, I think. Uh, and that hurts for these abilities there. You can like turn anything into whatever. If you're losing all your ones, then it's like uh, not as good. Yeah, it was close. That was, that was closer than I thought it was going to go. I made it to the boss. That's huge. I don't know. First try on the Yeti, made it to him. I I'll take it. I don't know. And I did keep forgetting my ability, even though I had it right here, using a yellow as a pink. But on, on him, I don't think I care about that, because I covered the pinks almost every time. It was the blues that were the problem. Yeah, maybe I do healing. Or just get the extra health from durability. That might have been helpful. Because that would have kept me alive there for one more round, but I still think on the next round, I wouldn't have enough. I would still get tanked. Yeah, I would still get tanked because it's, I suffer consequences, then I strike the boss. So I would have had to last through the next round to like not die. And that, I don't think that would happen with an extra heart or two. That's not enough. But yeah. The skills you need are the ones that allow you to change one die into two or three dice. Yeah, for him. Yes, that is true, actually. Correct. Yeah, none of these gave me more dice. They were all like a trade for a trade, like like one for one or one for less. So what is that? Matthew T. Williamson, thank you so much for becoming a producer of Rob's Gaming Table. Thank you for the support. If you're here in the chat, thank you so much. Awesome. Wow, we're going to reach our next goal like really fast. I love it. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Gratuitous, gratuitous catouflage. Am I saying that right? I'm assuming it was you. Thank you so much. <laughs> assuming that's what the hand up person is. It's me. It's me. Can't convert skill to items. Yeah. So vinyl. Oh, vinyl saying convert. Converted some of the skills to items before the boss fight. No, you can't do that. They can only go from under your character to XP. On the level card. That's that's the only path, I think. Well, thank you for the support. Much appreciated. Uh, don't forget to join your Patreon to Discord if you have a Discord account. Uh, and you can join into our Discord server and chat with other viewers of the channel. Uh, including Mel, myself, Justin, we're all in there. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Kate. We're blowing through Patreon goals a little too quickly. <laughs> I guess that's a good problem to have. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. But yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll plan to do my, my solo video from the last goal in a couple weeks. And it's like, in that couple weeks, I'll have another Patreon goal that'll be uh, haunting me every day. <laughs> it's all good. I just need to make them farther apart, I think. I underestimate the generosity of, of all of you. And you guys are awesome. I appreciate the support. How much longer in your year trial, Rob, is that over? Uh, so a year would be coming up when Gen Con hits, roughly. So Gen Con is happening like first weekish, last week of July, first week of August. I think I worked like one week after Gen Con, and then uh, I was trying, I was going to leave my job before Gen Con, but uh, they asked me to stay to finish some stuff off and help some other people and were willing to like let me slack and pay me extra money and stuff. So I just did that uh, and said, yeah, sure, why not? 
Um, so it was pretty good. Uh, but so it was about a week after Gen Con last year, I started the year. But then things have been going good. The support was better than I thought. The channel's growing faster than I expected. So I can definitely keep it going till the end of the year. And then I did some math and figured out if I can stay above uh, the two goals ago amount on Patreon, if that can stay like that, I can just keep doing it full time past the end of the year uh, for a while long after. Like, I'll just keep it going. And the more it increases, like, I, I can just keep doing this longer. And, and, and the extra money, I definitely can, once that end of the year hits, uh, a lot of that Patreon money still can go into the channel in equipment upgrades and board games and stuff. It should still be fine. Like, um, so yeah, knock on wood that nothing like goes bad or wrong that, uh, yeah, would need to like dig into more money or something, but, uh, living frugally definitely helps, uh, which is a trade off. That's how I look at it. Uh, okay. Let's see. Is that another 24 hour stream? No, no more 24 hour streams. We can't do that anymore unless we have a bunch of people helping us. Uh, what we would do for another 24-hour stream goal, uh, we'd just do two 12-hour streams on a Saturday and a Sunday. We'd make them like different hours, like on Saturday, like 9 to 9, and then like 11 to 11 or something, or something like that to try to hit more time zones. Uh, but yeah, it was just uh, the 24-hour stream thing, not to mention YouTube losing it. But even if I did a 24-hour stream and recorded it, I'm not sure, like, I'd be, record I'd be worried recording it might get lost or like... Somehow the recording would fail after that long or the software would break or uploading that to YouTube after would be a pain or something wouldn't work and I would lose it. So um, just to not risk that, I would probably rather stream like 12 hours or less, just under, so that YouTube will try to archive it. I would still try to record it though, just as a backup. But yeah, we can try that. Rob and Melcon, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> That's a, like a way in the future maybe. Oh, thank you, John, for the kind words. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. Uh, any other questions? Let's see here. Can you imagine Rob Khan having 5,000 people in their house playing? The most we've had in our house playing at one time is 30 people. And that was in a townhouse, not the one we're in right now, but a, a townhouse we used to live in, uh, which didn't even, we didn't even use the basement. Mel's here, she knows. Uh, and we just used our main floor and I pulled out a bunch of different folding tables and stuff. Everything was pretty close together. Uh, and we were jamming people in and we had people showing up, people leaving. But I think at one point we had almost 30 people in the house at once and had like four different tables all gaming at the same time. Uh, and yeah, we didn't use our backyard for that. We didn't use our upstairs or our downstairs. We just jammed everyone in a dining room and a living room and a little bit in a hallway. And yeah, we had everyone playing all at once. I, I had a little, little game going on. And in the same day, I've had probably 30 people. A few times we did like gaming gatherings at our house where I set up three or four tables and we just had games going throughout the day and people showing up and leaving and stuff. So we probably had maybe more than 30 in that day show up and come through. Uh, did like little mini tournaments for Star Realms and stuff. It was fun. Uh, just did a bunch of random games, did like little events and stuff. It was fun. Had like little dollar store trophies for people who won games. And we like took pictures of people holding trophies uh, as they won and, and, and what game they won and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it was fun. That was a few years back, of course, but yeah, it was good times. But 5,000 people, uh, I think there's like fire codes against that. <laughs> yeah, so we would do a haul, rent a haul, sell tickets. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> that would make sense. Oh, man. Yeah, maybe one day. Yeah, yeah. So John says, had a friend who had big gatherings and it morphed into a small private local con at a local hotel with over 140. Yeah, see, that that makes sense to me. That could happen. That could happen. I know lots of gamers in my area, just a lot we've like fallen out of touch with uh, over the years, and the pandemic didn't help with that for sure. Uh, but we do have a few local game stores. We have some board game cafes in the area. And I know there's some viewers on here that are not too far from us. Uh, that could definitely go into their gaming groups and try to rally people and stuff like that and go to their gaming stores and post flyers and that kind of thing. Uh, we definitely could do that. But yes, there would be a major COVID outbreak at Robin Milcon. That would definitely be a thing that would happen to me for sure. <laughs> so we don't want to do that now, but maybe a few years in the future. We are in Southern Ontario. We're like an hour, an hour and a half west of Toronto. Uh, not too far. We're like an hour-ish from the U.S. border uh, at Buffalo. 
So that's not too far. What I probably would do is probably do something like a meetup, like a weekend meetup at like Millennium Games or something. Uh, I'd call down there and see if like, I know they do lots of weekend events though, which is a problem, but maybe in the evening when it's not too busy in their gaming area, do something like that. But it better probably to rent out like a small hall or something. Oh, gratuitous. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're so far away. So far away. Yes, yes. I've been to BC a couple times. Yeah. Like a six hour flight. You're like a six hour flight away. Plus a drive. Plus a drive. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so that was cool. We're back tomorrow, 12 noon with some more one deck dungeon. Uh, we're going to continue our playthrough. I don't know. Do we try the Yeti again? Oh yeah. I should get my, uh, points, my experience points. Duh. So what did I get? Uh, I got a free one for playing on standard. I completed three floors. So that's four. I leveled up three times. So that's seven. And no boss. So I have seven. Reroll all ones and twos. Yeah, until the Yeti discards them first. That's not a good Yeti ability. Let's try to think about Yeti. What should I do here to prepare for another run against the Yeti? That's what I think we should try. Is there something on here that like would have helped more against the Yeti? I don't know. Definitely using a yellow as a pink doesn't really help against the Yeti. I feel like I should be looking in the healing. Or just here, durability. But that doesn't get me the seven I need to get durability. Uh, I should do this, prepared, right? Should do the potion. Should I just do the potion and just go healing for a bit? Mm. Prepared, yeah, the extra potion. Vinyl and Dragon are saying the potion too. I think I do this for now and then use that in the next plate to help work me up to finishing off some checks in here first. Like, this could work good against the Yeti. For rolling twos there would have been nice to maybe roll some higher stuff. But him just pitching away all my ones. So even after the re-roll, I think I lose the ones again. So if I re-rolled some twos and they became ones, I lose those also. So that's, like, maybe very bad against the Yeti. Yes, more drinking. <laughs> yes, okay. So I'll, I'll put seven in prepared. Or six, sorry, six on prepared. Let's do one more in durability. To try to build up, um, to try to build up to an extra health. Yeah, because taking prepared is like getting three free hearts, kind of, like one time. But we'll work up towards durability, I don't know. But I, I know I could have checked yellow boxes, though. Probably should have done that instead. But we'll, we'll fight another medium tomorrow. Uh, same one. Maybe we'll retry the Yeti or we'll try the Hydra. We'll see. Get better dice. No ones. Exactly. Yeah. So what, this, this might be awesome. This, uh, fortitude might be great against other, uh, bosses, but we'll just focus on the Yeti. Let's go with what we know for now. And I mean, every boss I'm sure starting with an extra potion is probably a great thing. Another thing I want to experience more is potions, like buying more potions, attaching them. And maybe, maybe that might be helpful getting one more potion on there that could could have helped against the Yeti. I don't know. Let me actually check. I want to see. What do we got here? Let's see. What do we got? I want to look. I want to look. Uh, let's see. Where is like one? That, oh, this. Like this would be better, right? Against the Yeti. Turning, uh, if I get a blue three and rolling two more pinks. That might be good. I don't know with the Paladin and how great that is, but that's getting more dice. This one, two yellows, rolling two pink and a yellow. It's getting me more dice, but the problem is it's getting me non-yellows. I love Invisibility Potion. Oh, I never even looked at that. Spend two time before an encounter. Skip to, to Skip the claim loot phase? What? 
Why would I want that? Oh, skip to the claim loot phase. Wow, I'm tired. All right. Skip to the claim loot phase. So I could spend two time and just take like a level four guy's loot? Oh, you instantly win by spending two time and a potion. Okay, okay, I see, I see. I see. Two time and a potion to jot the fight. Yeah, that's kind of neat, actually. I like that one. Okay. Did I just, like, ignore that anytime I saw it? Or did I just always flip this guy for time, it feels? I never even knew that was a thing. I probably should sit here and read the cards uh, later. Maybe tomorrow morning before the play. Just to kind of see what I'm kind of gunning for. But, I mean, sometimes you just don't see the stuff you need. Yeah, I'll try to focus on extra dice. Oh, this might be good too. Uh, increasing up to four of your dice by one each. That could help me when I change them all to fours. Then I can turn four of them into ones. Uh, that could help me on this guy getting some of these fives covered. Which could have helped me not take some damage. That could be a cool little combo. Yep, there's another increase four of your dice by one each. Oh, there you go. This would be great too. Spend an agility, roll two yellows. Backstab. Yeah, backstab. Did I not have that this play? I had that last one, right? That one's a good one to get the extra dice. Yep, backstab. Yeah, I gotta try to get backstab. Yeah, we'll try that tomorrow. We gotta try that tomorrow. Yeah, knock it on the boss since it has no loot. That's the problem, though. The potions, you take that, it's good for encounters, but that could lead to you getting... You know, I could level up quicker because I could win a, a level 4 encounter without wasting. But then again, I waste time to do it. But at least I don't get hits or waste more time in the fight if I have to spend time. Okay, so that's what we did. We did that stuff. And yeah. So we'll be back tomorrow, like I said. Uh, actually, we'll be back tonight uh, in three hours with a playthrough of Mansion of Madness. We're going to reattempt the scenario we played last week's Mansion of Madness. Kyle should be joining us. We'll have three players, Mel, I, and Kyle, uh, playing Mansion of Madness in three hours live. So I'm going to take a break, grab some dinner, and we'll be back for that. Uh, and then tomorrow I'm back at noon Eastern again on Friday. Uh, we're continuing with One Deck Dungeon. We're just going to try again. Uh, we'll go, I guess, after the Eddie, or maybe if you guys want to see the, uh, what was the other one, the Hydra? We could try on that. We'll take a look. Uh, maybe we just run on the Yeti and try to kill him. Since we kind of know the Yeti, what he does, it'd probably be good just to keep playing with those same rules so we don't miss anything or try not to miss anything. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with more of One Deck Dungeon. And then uh, I'll be scheduling it soon, but Saturday with more Gloomhaven. Justin will be joining us again. So we're going to be trying the heist scenario in that one that we've been holding on to until Justin's back. So I didn't put a poll on Patreon to pick that scenario for that reason. Because Justin will be here. He'll maybe be playing two scenarios in that episode. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and then I'll schedule some more live streams for next week. Uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom. I need to learn and play over the weekend. And schedule that hopefully early next week. Uh, and then the second thing that was in the poll. Or the third thing in the poll. I'll be going back to Hexplore It. Playing Volume 2. Forest of Adramon. Uh, and I should get a playthrough of that in next week. Uh, during the day. And we may continue the One Deck Dungeon. Uh, into next week too. We'll see how it's going. Uh, and I'll just sporadically put one deck dungeon playthroughs in there uh, to continue the campaign. I want to try all the different bosses and stuff. So uh, I don't need to necessarily beat the campaign uh, right away in a bunch of playthroughs. But I just want to see some different bosses and stuff. So we'll see. But anyways, thank you for all the support. Thanks everyone for watching. And we'll see you in a few hours. Bye-bye.